everyone, good evening and welcome to your very own 9th and 10th grade channel. I'm Aishwarya and in our class today as a part of our 1000 PYQ series, we are going to get started with top 30 PYQs from geography. So I hope all of you are excited for today's class because in today's class we are going to be having a lot of interesting questions. But of course before I get started everyone, I hope my audio, my video and my screen and what I'm writing on the screen is visible to all of you. If it is, please do go ahead and give me a quick thumbs up everyone. Yes, all right. I can see that a lot of you are here already. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Asta, Ankush, Aarti, Adyashri. I can see Prithvi. Are we good to go? Give me a quick thumbs up, all my beautiful bachas. Yes, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Now, I can see a lot of old names in the video. I mean, uh, who are part of our live chat. And I can see that a lot of new names are here as well. So, to all my new students who might be watching my video for the first time, please make sure that you like this video and you hit that subscribe button, right? So, as we know, today we are going to be looking at 30 PYQs. Now, to be honest, I'll tell you something. It's not actually 30. There are going to be a total of 35 questions. And is this going to be a menti quiz? Yes and no. Okay. So, we're going to start off with solving questions. They could be 2 marks, 3 marks, 4 marks. So, I'll tell you how, what is the plan for today. We are going to be having 25 questions out of which some questions are going to be 2 marks. Some of them are going to be 3 marks. Some of them are going to be 4 marks. And the last 5 of them are going to be 5 mark questions. Alright. And after this, we will then switch to our MCQ based questions, which we will do on Menti. So, we are going to have Menti and menti will happen in the end right so end of today's class we are going to be doing menti so are we clear with our plan and this class will go on for maybe around one and a half hours okay i'm estimating it because see this class is not about teaching right today's class is about practicing so you know the concepts, you know everything already. So it's only about applying and practicing it because as you know, we are going to be looking at PYQs. That means previous year question papers and questions especially. So we'll try to understand what kind of questions will come. Let's see how much of your preparation is done for geography. How much more is remaining to be done, right? So a total of 35 questions are going to be there. So for now, for everybody like this video, do not forget to like the video. Do not forget to subscribe okay so our plan today is to make sure that we get at least 200 likes on this video right so shall we all aim to get 200 likes on this very quickly my bachas i can see a good number of students in the live but please make sure that you all have liked it right yes everyone quickly and how is the josh for today because we know geography in itself, good number of chapters, very boring, so much to study. I understand because normally we tend to feel that way. But today is about practicing, right? And as you practice, trust me, you will be able to, you know, crack and do your exams very well. And our aim is to help you out with it end to end, right? Starting with your maths, your science, your SST and your English. Yeah, so we've got you covered. Okay, a lot of you have your pre-boards going on. That is amazing, amazing. Quickly, bachas, like this video and give me a thumbs up and we're going to get started, right? We shall get started super soon. Hello, Anupriya. Hello. And everybody, please make sure that you have your notebooks and pens ready with you. Have your textbooks open on the side also so that you can make a note of all the important pointers. Have your water bottle with you just like how I have my water bottle. And I think then we are good to go, right? We are good to go with everything. Yes, ma'am, I'm suffering from cold, not sleeping well, right? So it's okay, please take care. Ma'am, what is the weightage? Good amount of 20 marks. I mean, if I'm remembering it right, 20 marks approximately you will get from this, okay? From all your chapters. Then, of course, you have 5 marks of map work that comes from both history as well as geography, right? Okay, all right, everybody. So in your case, all books, all your lessons hold good amount of weightage, right? I mean, all the 4 books that you have, they hold weightage. Okay. So everybody, if you still not subscribe to our channel, then now is the time, right? Now is the time to subscribe. Yes, because you know 9 and 10 
especially Baiju's 9th and 10th grade channel has gotten super serious about your exam preparation. We are starting off with 1000 PYQs in 50 days to help you with your end-to-end -end practice with all chapters, right? And apart from that, soon we are going to be having critical questions from chapters. We are going to be doing crash course. We'll be doing one shots. We are going to be doing so much on our channel as a part of our board preparation. And we know that we never say it's your board preparation. It's our board preparation, right? If you are writing boards, then that means it's it's as good as us going and writing board exams because that's how invested we are in your exams and in you doing well. So if you've not subscribed, if you feel like, do, do, do I feel like Baiju's 9 and 10 has got me covered? Do you think I will be able to do a proper exam preparation with Baiju's 9 and 10? Trust me, my answer is yes, right? So very quickly, everybody, please make sure that you like this video. Do not forget to like. Do not forget to subscribe. Very, very important. And as all of you know, we have a smart playlist for all of you. The sheet has been shared. Link you will find in the description also. You will be able to find it, right? So you will be able to find all the playlists pertaining to your 10th grade chapter starting from one shots ncrt exercise and ncrt exemplar as well for the chapters that we have done it yes yes abhilasha please tell me please tell me bacha what is it that you need okay let me know in the comments below uh, chat section below and for those of you who are looking for geography, ma'am, I have not started studying. It's still not started. I don't know what to do, right? So should I start studying? I need help with geography. Then trust me, Baiju's 9 and 10 channel pay, that is also there, right? And as you know, we have covered all the important chapters. It is there in our session. It is there in our playlist. So you can go ahead and watch it, right? So you will be able to find all the videos regarding all the chapters that are there. Yes? Ma'am, channel ko subscribe kar diya. Amazing. So I hope all of you have done it. Ma'am, lifelines of national economy is not there. It is there by Ruchi ma'am. Right? So it was done already in term two. So you can go ahead and watch this video. Yes? And I think you will also find some important questions from this chapter also in Ruchi ma'am's video. So you can go check it out if you still have it. Okay? That's why. Take a screenshot of this particular page. page right? So it will definitely help you. And in case if you feel like you need a proper one shot for this particular chapter do let me know okay ma'am it's a question bank video it is not an explanation in case if you need an explanation let me know in the comment section of this video that ma'am we need a proper one shot for the chapter we'll start with that we'll inform the team and then we'll get started yes 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 i'm going to start the quiz everybody so don't worry Okay, thank you so much Abhilasha. That's extremely sweet of you. I can see good number of students. Please make sure everybody watch the video. Menti is towards the end of today's session. Yes? All right. So now I need all of you to actively answer in the chat. We are going to get started, right? So we are going to get started with question number one. Now the first set of questions are going to be two mark questions. And one thing you need to know, especially from today's class, is not just on what is the answer, but how to write the answer. So I will have a page in which you can see how to write the answer also, okay? No, no, we will not split one shot. Don't worry, okay? Don't worry at all. So here's a quick question for everybody for which I want all of you to answer, all right? Differentiate between metallic and non-metallic minerals with examples, right? So it's for two marks which has come in the year 2013. Very simple and easy question. So you will get one mark for writing about what is the difference between a metallic mineral and a non-metallic mineral, right? You will get one mark for this. And if you write one example or maximum two examples each, you are going to get one, one mark. So in the chat, very quickly, yes? Okay, happy holies, we will get to it. We'll have a session on that very soon, yes? Metallic ions have cement, okay? Some of you are saying my metallic minerals, not metallic ions, sorry. Metallic minerals will have iron in it, all right, very good. Ma'am, screen is not clear. Please improve your um, resolution. In, go to settings and improve it, right? This everybody is telling me, ma'am, this has iron. Okay. This has iron. What about the other one? Non-metallic is like kacha road. Okay. They contain minerals which contain bauxite, iron. Yes, examples being gold and silver. Or Very good. They have metals and India has a wide range of it. Non-metallic does not have metals in it, right? No iron. Yes, very good, very good. Examples are coming. I can see iron, magnesium, aluminium. Very good. 
Very simple and easy question, right? So metallic minerals are nothing but those which contain metals, right? And we know that when we talk about metals, it includes your iron and copper, right? While on the other hand, non-metallics do not contain any metals in it. And mainly you find some sand, clay and all of that associated with it, right? Examples again being iron ore, copper and manganese. And you have uh, your examples for non-metallic minerals such as, uh, you know, limestone, uh, gypsum and mica. Yes, very good. Non-metallic, again, non-metallic minerals, again, show those kind of pro properties, right? Yes, very good, Anupriya. Very good. Yes, all right. So, when you're writing the answer, you need to write these two points. Yes, this is how you'll have to write the answer. So, you can take a screenshot of this or else, you know, I will be sharing this PDF with you on Telegram. You will be able to find that as well, right? So, what are these non-metallic -met minerals? Minerals containing one or more metals usually occur as mineral deposits such as iron and copper, right? And as you know, examples again being manganese, magnesium, you can write all of that. Non-metallic minerals, as you know, is having quarries or depositions of stone and clay and have deposits with chemical fertilizers or they'll have some salts depositions in it, right? So on the other hand, as we know, right, we know that these are some examples. So this is how you write the answer. For two marks, don't write stories. One mark here, one mark here, you are good to go. Done. Where can we get 2022 PYQs? You will find the 2022 sample paper solved on our session. But you can type it. You might be able to find it on the Baiju's website as well. So you can check it out there for uh, furries, um, fuzzies that you are asking me. You might be able to find it out on our website also. Right? And we will do one where we solve the 2022 paper as well. You might find it on our channel. So you can check it out. Ma'am, please wait for screenshot. Zarur, Zarur. And in the meanwhile, others like the video. Don't forget to like. Do not forget to like and subscribe, right? Yes. Ma'am, my SST exam is tomorrow. Then I'm sure that for the geography part, you will definitely find this helpful. Yes. And if you are new, please make sure that you subscribe. Yes, don't forget. Now we'll move on to question number two, all my bachas. Shall we move on to question number two? All right. And I need all of you to give me the answer on the chat, right? Ma'am, in differentiate form, do we need to write in tabular form? Yes. Actually, this is a two mark question. So since it was just definition and example, you could write it this way. Okay. But if you have more than that, which I think we will look on later, preferably what I will also recommend is you write in a tab tabular form. So this also, if you do it, you will be able to write it in tabular form. Right. All right. So now we will move on to the next one. Yes. This is the first chapter, Nish uh, Nishita Jyoti. It's the first one. Okay. All right. Next one is easy peasy question. Classify resources based on or on the basis of origin, right? Yes. Ma'am, can we write metallic minerals are minerals that contain ferrous substance? You can or you can just say which contain iron in it, right? Or which contain metals like iron. So you can write it that way also, Aditya. I think that's fine. Yes. Basis of origin, two marks. This two marks is in your pocket, right? So easy these questions are. Very good. This is deleted portion, but nonetheless, we are just going to quickly have a look at it, right? Yes, very good. So we know that on the basis of origin, we know that it can be classified into biotic and abiotic resources. Biotic resources are those which are obtained from living things, right? While on the other hand, abiotic resources are obtained from non-living things, right? So fruit, wood, leather, all these are living and land, water, metals are all non-living, right? Okay, I mean, are all non-living. So as you know, in this case, when you're writing the answer, all you need to do is to write these two points, right? What are on the basis of origin, you can write biotic and abiotic resources. And you can write one word, which are obtained from living organisms, which are obtained from non-living organisms, or you can say non-living things, right? Very simple and easy. Yes. No, no, I mean, nothing. No, somebody, I read a comment, right? So I think I went with that flow, right? Sorry, I think a lot of you got confused with what I said, right? So don't worry, I read a comment and I went in that flow, okay? Very sorry about that. Yes, ma'am, handwriting how? This is a font, that's how it is, okay? 
we'll do a separate class on that bhuvna i think we've already i think tarana ma'am has done a video discussing the sst syllabus okay so if you check out on our channel if you type your syllabus 2022 2023 tarana ma'am has already discussed it okay in detail so please go ahead and check that video out okay you will be able to find it yes all right so now we will move on to the next one i think we have one more question on types of resources but nonetheless let's learn about it okay all right so the next question was something that came in 2022 for two marks all right so this is a very recent question yes so have a look everybody you have to fill in the blanks identify a and b so the examples or what they have put on the other side a is biotic and abiotic renewable and non renewable yes everybody quickly what is a and what is b in the chat very quickly so here they told you it is biotic and abiotic resources and here we have renewable and non renewable resources right very good yes very good based on exhaustible exhaustibility and based on origin very good you guys have got it in your pockets right so we know that on the basis of origin or where we get them from we have biotic and abiotic resources while on the other hand on the basis of exhaustibility we have renewable and non renewable resources so when you are writing the answer write it down in this way a is based on origin while b here is based on exhaustibility that means that if is it exhaustible do we have an unlimited surplus of it or is it something that can get over fast right so based on that we have renewable and non renewable very simple and easy questions right your two mark questions are those which you will definitely be able to answer okay yes ma'am we need to explain this question no you don't need to explain right so in this case if you see they are just telling you to do fill in the blanks and they are asking you two marks right so that's all you need to do and yes bachcha pdf will be provided to all of you so don't worry about it okay all right so now we'll move on to question number 4 everybody on your screen yes yes i will be slower okay now i know i have a tendency to go a little more faster so in case if i am a little fast you let me know i pace it down don't worry i'll wait for all of you yes This is also a very simple question. How is mining hazardous? Explain. Two marks only. Very easy. Okay, no lot of effort to think, overthink this question. How is mining hazardous? Explain. Right? Yes, very good. it exploits resources it causes soil erosion it cracks on the surface lead to soil erosion soil degradation very good i am seeing a lot of answers what about all my other bachchas yes life of miners are at risk right people who do the act of mining even they are at risk yes so we see that there are two aspects to this so we are talking about how mining can be hazardous to people right and how it can be hazardous or how it is not good for the environment right Yes, very good dumping of face and slurry. Yes, very good, very good. So as we know, right, mining is a leading cause of causing land degradation, right? And we know that when you excavate the land for mining, we know that it also causes dumping in the surrounding areas, right? And we know that in places like Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh and everywhere, we know that this is practiced extensively. Yes, it leads to soil degradation. I was reading out the comments Priyanshu, I was not saying ki this was there i was just reading up the comments right so now of course as we know mining also impacts health of humans right so it affects the human health and we know that it contaminates the surrounding regions and we know that soil and water resources are also affect right they are also affected so in this case when you are writing make sure that you have both pointers about the environment and also make sure you have pointers on the human effect also how it can be hazardous and not so good about it right so mining of uh, mining activities impact human health as well as the surrounding environment start and give it a structure 
right? And of course, it contaminates water resources that is polluted in that region. Soil and water resources are also extremely polluted by dumping of waste and slurry, right? And you can talk about how it causes soil degradation. Yes, of course, you can write about all those extra pointers as you are suggesting to me in the chat, right? But consider that it's only for two marks, okay? So if you're writing for two marks, you don't need to write too much also. You need to just explain in simple words, right? You just need to write two points, exactly. Don't write too many pointers and overcomplicate the answer. Try to figure out what are those points. You need to talk about the environment, you need to have one point on it and you need to write have one point on the impact on human health, okay? So this much is enough. Maximum what I tend to do is as a child, I used to have this habit where I used to write one, or one point extra, you know, to be on the safer side. So that is a habit I picked up as a child. Now if you want to be somebody who wants to just write one point just in case, you can do that. Not a problem. And for those of you who are asking me, ma'am, kya PDF milega? Zaroor PDF milega. It will be there on our Telegram channel, right? So please make sure that you go ahead and you check it out. Yes? What will be the word limit for two marks? I think, see, I am at the top of my head. I think it should be around 40 to 80 words. I am not able to recall. But it should be around that much, okay? Yes, 80 words. See, again, they don't want you to make it so elaborate. So in your um, paper also, they will tell you how many words. Yes, huh, 50 to 60 words. Thank you. Yes. All right. So now, of course, everybody, now we'll move on to question number five. Again, very easy question. How can solar energy solve the energy problem to some extent in India? It's come back way in 2015, long ago. A little old question that is there. But simple question, right? Yes, okay. So how can solar energy solve the energy problem to some extent? Yes? We'll be having for, see, for SST especially, we'll be having it for history also. So don't worry about it. We are definitely going to have it. It is a cleaner resource. It is renewable. Okay, very good. What else? Okay, for the, hello, uh, Arts. Welcome to the class. Hope that you all are enjoying today's class and you like this video, right? It is easily accessible and it is renewable. Okay, solar energy can be converted to ele electrical energy. All right. Yes, what else can we write? I'm reading out your answers and then we are going to go ahead and see what the answer is, right? Ma'am, it is renewable. Yes, it is renewable. It reduces. Yes, well, well, very good. It reduces the dependency on Things like firewood, dung cake and on, you know, generating, especially in rural areas, if we use it, right? We know that it can generate a lot of fumes and everything. So in this case, if you see, we know that, of course, mainly it reduces the dependency on firewood and conserves the environment, right? So it is more environmental friendly. And we know that especially in tropical countries, which receives a lot of sunlight, like especially countries closer to the equator, we know that it's very beneficial there and of course used for producing electricity and heating lighting purposes right very good everyone very good yes so when you're writing it the main point here is that it will reduce the dependency on conventional sources right such as firewood especially where especially in the rural areas and this way things like dung cake like you told me these things like dung cake can be used for manure, right? Rather than using it and as a firewood or to burn, it can be used as manure. Yes? So when you're writing it, you can start off by talking about how India is a tropical country, which has enormous possibility of tapping solar energy. You can have an introduction. Yes, and of course, you know that it minimizes the dependence of rural households on firewood and dung cake. Very important pointer that you have to write. And we know that this can cause pollution and harm the lungs, right? Which is why this also reduces pressure on conventional sources of energy and contribute to environmental conditions. So do not forget to write all of these important pointers. Very, very important, bachas. okay? So for two marks, if you see, I know it looks like a lot. That's just because of how the handwriting is. But this is one point that you cannot miss. This is another point that you cannot miss, okay? Whatever I've highlighted on your screens are super duper important, yes? Are we clear, everybody? Are we clear? Yes? Ma'am, how many questions are done? We are done with five questions. Ma'am, does it reduce globe or does it have an impact on global warming? Yes, it does because it's reducing your dependency on commercial 
uh, what do you say? It's reducing your dependency on conventional resources, right? So your greenhouse house emissions can also at the end of the day be tapped upon. Okay. Yes. All right, everyone. So very quickly, very, very quickly like the video. Don't forget to like we have a target today. No, we want to hit 200 likes and I can see good number of you are here in class. So please make sure that you like this video and you do not forget to subscribe. Yes. All right. Ma'am, can we write that? Uh, so preferably, again, like I told you, don't digress too much. See, in two marks and all, there are many points. For every question, there are many points that you can write about, okay? But at the same time, if you go ahead and you write all the pointers, you lose the essence of the answer. Which is why in this case, if you see, right, I think it's important that you just write all the important pointers that are here that I have made sure. Yes. <clears throat> Ma'am, does marking scheme include extra points? No. So, I mean, in the marking scheme, of course, right, as you know, two marks means one mark they will give for one important pointer. Which is why I said what I used to do as a child is I used to always write one extra point to be extra safe, okay? That is my habit as a child. Now, at the same thing, as you know, right, it's important that we go ahead and we make sure that we write the necessary pointers. You can write one or two extra points, but these are the most important points that are there. Yes? Menti will be towards the end of today's class. Okay, towards the end. And we're at question number six. We have another 20 questions to go. Yes? And trust me, the questions are very easy. Now we're going to move on to third one, right? So we're going to move on to the next set of questions, which are going to be three mark questions. Now, let me tell you one thing. The three mark questions are, trust me, they are the struggle, okay? Especially when it comes to subjective question writing. Three marks is where you might struggle to find the balance. Do I write exactly three points? Because there are some questions like this one that is there, where we know that they're asking exactly to describe three features of Rabi crops. But at the same time, there are going to be some questions for which you might have more points to write. So do you write those more or do you write the less ones? So that is somewhere we need to strike the balance, right? Yes. It requires high amount of rain. It is sown in winters, harvested in April, March. Very good. Yes. All right. Very good. They're harvested. They require more irrigation because they're grown in drier areas. Okay. Very good. Yes. So as you know, these are the important pointers, right? So start off by saying that they are sown in the winter season between October to December time and they are harvested in summer between April to June, right? And we know that they are grown in northern and the northern northwestern regions and we know that in regions especially which receives a lot of rainfall during the winter months, right? And in case if they are grown in such places where there's not enough rainfall, irrigation is also required, yes? Don't write rain fed crops okay because if you say that they are highly dependent on rain that will become a characteristic of kharif crops right so don't write too many those examples also because now if you say it's a rain fed crop it will be a confusion between kharif right and what are kharif crops they are most often known as the monsoon crops because the seeds are sown during monsoon season right so very important Ma'am, how to learn crop names? Very confusing. I do understand. So for those of you who are asking for that, make a table, right? And have the important pointers. Fill it up and then study. Okay? So how can we define carif crop? Carif crop can be defined as monsoon crops, which are sown during the monsoon season around June, July, harvested during winter season. Yes? So those are the pointers that you will have to write about. And then, of course, end it with some examples. So those of you who are asking me, ma'am, how do I write my answer? Answer is there on your screens, right? So as you know, Rabi crops are sown in winter from October to December, harvested in summer between April, right? Availability of precipitation during winter months due to the western temperate cyclone in um, so cyclone helps for these crops to grow. Otherwise, of course, the land needs to be irrigated, right? So some important ones are wheat, barley, peas and gram. Right. And now, of course, as we know, these cro crops are grown in large parts of the north and northwestern parts. You can write one or two examples. OK. All right. Ma'am, how to again, characteristic of soil, type of soil, where we find them, preferably make a tabular column. OK. And I have a quick question to ask all of you. If we help you out with such kind of classes, do you think that it will help you out if we tell you how to study these important topics? We can have some classes maybe later on, right? On how to study those topics and how to, you know, go about it. 
Yes, will this kind of class help you all out? Let me know. Especially because you have some topics where you are concerned about, right? Ki ma'am kaise pade, right? So I'm sure that you are going to be a little worried. Yes, ma'am, it would be helpful. So we'll come up with those classes, okay? I've taken your suggestion. We'll come up with it soon. But first, we're going to target on the PYQs and then we will go ahead. Ma'am, short one. Yes, we can then do a recorded video, right? So we'll put up a recorded video so that that will help you out. Okay. Yes, very good. Yes, I will do one on handwriting as well. Don't worry. I'll have it very soon. Okay. So here, some of you are asking me, my example of carif crop, very easy. Rice and cotton is an example of carif crop, right? Okay. Yes, yes, we will do chapter summaries. We will be doing all of it on the channel starting with this, right? So we're going to slowly start. As you know, Ankita Ma'am and I are also helping you out. No, we are mainly here to help you out with it. So of course, as you know, we are also helping you out step by step. So just stay subscribed, have faith in us. We have got you covered, okay? Map ka bhi hum dekhenge, zarur dekhenge, theek hai? But first, some theory questions ko ek bar solve karenge. All right, everybody, next one. Describe any three features of waterways in India. Three mark question. Very easy. Three points are there only for this, right? Exactly three points are there. It is super simple. Yes? Yes, ma'am, map. Ha, zarur karenge. Don't worry, don't worry, bacha. Yes, it is cheap. Okay, what else? Everybody's like, ma'am, cheap. Yes, they are all easily available. All right. They are used in trade. Ma'am, large goods at cheap price. Okay, what else? What else? Large goods are transported. Okay. Ma'am, so sad. Kya hua? Ma'am, menti time in about 40 minutes max. More suitable for carrying bulky goods. Yes, very good. It is fuel efficient. Yes. Transports bulky goods. Wonderful, guys. Wonderful, right? So as you know, right, we know that waterways is the cheapest mode of travel and mainly it is suitable for transporting heavy bulky material. So when we talk about cargo goods and everything, right, when we talk about transporting it at a, as a, at a large scale, we know that waterways are more efficient when compared to the rest. And we know that they are fuel efficient and eco-friendly mode of transport. Three points are needed only because in the question only they told you. Describe any three features. See, question may if they have told you three features. Why you want to unnecessarily extend and write four, five pointers? Question has made it very clear. I want three points on Rabi crops. I want three points on waterways. So don't overthink the question, right? In SST especially, don't overthink it. If they have specified clearly three points, write three points. Now again, now you'll tell me, ma'am, you wrote four points. What is this, right? Why you wrote that? So now, of course, as you know, it's out of habit of me as a child, right? So as you know that waterways are the cheapest means of transport, most suitable for carrying heavy, bulky goods. And we know that they are fuel efficient and environmentally, you know, mode of transport. Now, of course, it, I've also mentioned how it also connects you with foreign trade, right? That is like an extra pointer that you can write about. Yes? Okay. Thank you so much, Chaitanya. Thank you so much. Yes? All right. So are we clear with this? Are we clear? So now we will move on to question number eight, everybody, on your screens. Yes. So the question here is, water scarcity may be an outcome of the large and growing population in India. Analyze this statement. And this is come in 2019. See, this, if you see, all of you will tell me, no, ma'am, now how many points do I write for this? Because they have not told me three points I have to write for three marks. So how many points that are there? So what do we do, right? How do we go about this? So here in these kind of questions is where the key pointers or the key concepts needs to be mentioned. You can write one whole paragraph. You can write maybe, you know, 10 pages worth of information, okay? But if your key concepts, your key pointers are not going to be there, then you will not get marks, okay? So very, very important. Now, in the meanwhile, as all of you are going to tell me, I am going to write some of the answers. I am finding it in the chat, right? So everybody quickly. Ma'am, rich people, <laughs> okay? Yes, French Revolution will come soon. I think it's coming this week. Yes. 
मैम मोर पॉपुलेशन मीन्स मोर कंजम्पन मोर कंजम्पन मीन्स मोर पोल्यूशन ओके यस मैम फेस फ्रॉम फैक्ट्रीज एंड इंडस्ट्रीज यस very good over exploitation okay very good pollution makes water not usable fine okay rapid urbanization very good b2 yes so you'll have to write that aspect also right so if you have a growing population right if you have a growing population then you need to mention right what will happen so in this case it's a very simple flow chart you can take a screenshot of it on what causes right maybe let me use a blue color what are the causes of water scarcity how it can affect it qualitatively and quantitatively right so as you know if there is growing population right growing population will mean that more food is required yes and if more food is required that means that more amount of water is needed for irrigation now if more water is taken for irrigation then what will happen water that is there in the water table will go down no the amount of water will get reduced similarly we know that qualitatively using chemical fertilizers and everything for you know crop production and agriculture it can you know affect the soil ph and the soil alkalinity so this is how agriculture will have an impact now similarly water is also required in the industry because as you know there is urbanization and industrialization that means that more amount of water gets utilized for domestic and industrial use which again means it leads to water pollution right so this right here is how you need to write so when you are writing about water scarcity take a screenshot of this table it's a very simple way connect the dots and then write your answer yes so as you can see on your screens everybody how do we start off with it start off by saying water is a necessary resource everybody requires water to survive right and we know that with increase in population there is increase in demand over population has caused over consumption right and large population means more water not only for domestic use but also to produce more food which is why to facilitate higher food grain we know that water resources are over exploited now rapid urbanization and industrialization has led to rapid consumption leading to water scarcity so this when you are writing some of it can be in your own words but are you seeing the key words right some of you are like ma'am it's so confusing right so i know think about the key words you told me all the key words to be honest right so i'm going to circle the key words from my answer only all of you told me about overpopulation leading to overconsumption right and similarly all of you told me that it causes overexploitation there is rapid urbanization and industrialization which has led to consumption leading to water scarcity yes Ma'am, can we say water is present? If the water present is the same, but due to increase in population, it has led to decline per consumption and other factors as it causes its unaccess to certain group, unaccessible, right or inaccessible is the word. So you'll have to also, you know, um, specify it a little more clearly. But yes, you can talk about it. It's not just. You can start off with that point. That's actually very good to start off with saying that water is the same. right but increasing population is there and as a result that's why it has caused now some of you ask me ma'am is it important to memorize the flow chart no you don't need to write the flow chart in your exam flow chart is for you to study okay flow chart is for you to study and in geography i will always prefer that you study with flow charts okay making flow charts will definitely help you yes so are we clear everybody are we clear with this very easy question right Hello Anmol hello smiley queen no problem no problem bachas everybody don't forget to like this video are you all finding this helpful are you finding this particular class helpful if you are then you know what to do no you need to make sure that you like this video and you don't forget to subscribe to our channel yes very good it is uh like a mind map which makes it easy to study right yes very good very good now you know our target no we need to hit at least 200 likes if not we should touch 100 likes also no so very quickly everybody i can see 91 and i know we can make it to 100 very easily nine of you just need to like the video right yes hello kamla hello ma'am can we say that oh your chat is moving very fast i'll just have a look at it ma'am can we say water present is the same but due to increasing population it leads to decline per person consumption causing its an inaccessibility you can say see that's what i'm saying no 
ड्यू टू अदर फैक्टर्स यू कैन नॉट जस्ट लीव इट हैंगिंग सेइंग ड्यू टू अदर फैक्टर्स यू हैव टू से व्हाट आर दोज अदर फैक्टर्स हाउ इट इज नीडेड फॉर एग्रीकल्चर डोमेस्टिक यूज इंडस्ट्रियल यूज यू नीड टू राइट दिस ओके सो यू कैन नॉट मेक इट सिंपल लाइक अ लॉट ऑफ यू आर आस्किंग मी आई होप यू आर क्लियर एंड एवरीबॉडी एल्स आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू हैव यू नो यू डोंट डाइग्रेस फ्रॉम टुडेज यू नो पीवाईक्यू सीरीज बिकॉज आई कैन सी लॉट ऑफ पैरेलल कन्वर्सेशन हैपनिंग यू डू नो दैट इफ यू कीप स्पैमिंग यू कैन गेट टाइम Doubt, right? So please be careful. This is question number nine. Okay. Now we have done eight questions. We are moving on to nine questions. Yes. Question number nine. I mean. Okay. This is a very again not so direct question, but little indirect. The consequence of environmental degradation does not respect national or state boundaries. Justify the statement. this is not direct no how many of you think this is a direct question but at the same time this is so easy talking about environmental degradation what will happen that's all simple we all know now we need to connect it to how this does not respect national or state boundaries right global warming yes garvit you are on the right track now i need you to think of how you would phrase this right yes because we all live on earth okay very good Ma'am, I didn't understand this. It's okay, bacha. No problem. It's about population in a particular area. All right. Yes, everybody. Global warming. See, those of you who told me global warming as the answer, you are more or less correct. Okay, more or less, you are there. it will affect national and state boundaries all right so this is from your first chapter resources and you know development that is there deforestation okay unusual distribution okay so let's shall i give you the answer to this because see when i saw this question also i was thinking how will you write this answer right because it's not easy see you know the concept you are talking about all the necessary concepts that are there but how are you going to write it as an answer that is the trick here see now you start off with saying can we justify the statement so you start by saying yes the consequences of the environmental degradation does not respect that means if one country is not using its resources wisely and if it is you know maybe contributing or doing some activities which can cause pollution that doesn't mean that only in that country there will be pollution right so if you know if there are increased amount of carbon emissions or increased amount of air pollution let's say from india right doesn't mean that india will only get affected by that the consequences can go everywhere right so things like global warming acid rain right greenhouse impact all of that can be affected globally so you can state an example you can give a hypothetical example right you can say hypothetically if india were to contribute to air pollution its neighboring states that are there like pakistan bangladesh sri lanka they will all face the impact and there there is no bias of whether it is india pakistan or bangladesh right there it is all about the world right or it is all there are no borders and impact of environmental degradation is global right it can affect it globally which is why when we think of protecting the environment we need to think at it at a broader picture so you can give so many examples you can write saying you know uh, if we cut trees in brazil right from the amazon forest we must be thinking right why should i care about trees getting cut in brazil how does that affect me but we know that the amazon rainforest are the lungs of the world and that in itself can have an impact globally right which is why in this case you need to give a hypothetical example and write it down so when you are writing the answer have a look at this it is true that environmental degradation does not respect nations boundaries or state and effects of environmental degradation are felt globally and internationally right so things like global warming acid rain they are not controlled by one nation it is a global matter right it affects everybody all over the world and it's necessary to find a solution so you can give a hypothetical example like i told you if india causes air pollution that means that all over the world it can be felt right that's why having sustainable development is essential for mankind so here you need to say how the consequences are felt and what we can do yes so are we clear everybody are we clear with this my bachas are we clear yes give me a quick
क्विक थम्स अप हेलो अर्नाव हेलो यस Everybody, please stay focused in class, right? I need you to stay focused. Arnav, I've called out your name. Yes, Gaurav. Yes. Okay. See, think about these questions. Now, this requires some amount of thought from your end, right? So it's important, ma'am. Repeat, please. कोई नहीं. So here in this case, as you know, right? So when you think about it, I know some of you are saying, Kanika is like, ma'am, डर लगा है, डर लग रहा है कि अगर मेरे पेपर में ऐसा क्वेश्चन आया तो मैं कैसे लिखूँ? Think about it. Just read the question logically, right? Think about it. Consequence of environmental degradation does not respect national or state boundaries. So they're saying that if there is environmental degradation, air pollution, acid rain, any degradation you think about, they're saying that it is not restricted to a certain country or a certain state. It can be felt across the world. How? Take the example of global warming, and you can write. So, if there's increased amount of greenhouse emissions in one country, the impact is, you know, felt globally, right? Which is why it's important that you mention those points, and then go ahead and talk about how. Which is why when we talk about sustainability or having sustainable practices, it should not be something that only one country or one person thinks about. Everybody needs to contribute. Okay? All right. Now moving on to question number ten, everybody. Question number ten. Yes. On your screens. Now this is a simple question, but requires a little more thought. Okay, describe the importance of an equitable distribution of resources in society. Okay, ma'am, blueprint ke according aayega question paper. Yes, and we'll be doing your SST sample paper next week. Okay, so we'll be giving you more insight into what kind of questions will come. So don't worry. Yes, all right. Ma date sheet has not come out yet, so don't ask me about when the exam is. When the date sheet comes, we will be updating you, right? So here we are talking about equitable distribution of resources. Yes, ARK gaming. I will try my best to explain in Hindi, but as you know, right? We know that we'll have to write the answer in English, which is why I am stressing on English. Yes, what is equitable resources? It means that resources needs to be distributed equally. Need to be distributed equally. Now, what what are they asking? They are like, ma'am, why should we do right? The question is, why should we distribute it equally? That's it. For sustainable practices, okay, very good. Not for anybody's greed. Yes, less exploitation. Everybody, keep the answers coming in in the chat. No, jaldi jaldi, we can go ahead. Yes, less exploitation will not cause division of society. Yes, all right, less exploitation. So as we know, right, what are indiscriminate use of resources leads to you know making sure that there is depletion of resources, and of course, if few people have a hand on these resources, it can cause you know division amongst you know rich and poor, right? So mainly, what is the role of having equitable? So why do we need to have equitable distribution of resources? First and foremost, to have a sustained quality of life right so sustained quality of life and for maintaining global peace and it also gives equal access to people right equal access to all the resources that are there so that either for direct benefit or we will get it for indirect benefit yes and we also know that it is necessary for a sustainable existence so for our future also we need to make sure that we have a proper usage of these resources yes it is not for anyone's greed very good very good so when you're writing the answer you can start off by saying this right an equitable distribution of resources has become essential for sustained quality of life gives equal access to people and of course if the present trend of you know utilizing resources goes ahead in the future our planet is in danger right which is why resource planning is going to be essential yes All right, peace for all. I mean, Shahan, I am glad that our channel is helping you. I am glad how you told that fifty percent of the questions we are discussing is coming in your exams, right? So now you know. You tell all your friends that listen. Byju's nine and ten is the place where we have to study from, right? 
Yes, Ayushi, definitely, definitely, Bacha, I will be doing it, so don't worry. So we are clear with this question on how to write the answer. No, what are the important keywords and pointers? Yes. Are we clear? All my bachas, give me a quick thumbs up and we shall go ahead to question number 11. And after question number 15, we'll take like a 5 minute break to drink some water and freshen up. All right. So four more questions, I mean five more questions and we'll go ahead. Okay. All right. Very good. So we're just half an hour in and we're done with 10 questions. Right. Ma'am, how does water availability resources vary over time and space? See, again, availability of a resource is dependent on the utilization of the resource, right? So based on which space, so when we talk about time, at least when we know that over time, there has been increase in demand for water resources for wherever we use them. And of course, we know that there are times when we have encroached, right? Especially with lakes and everything, we have encroached it. Yes? Okay. All right, everybody. All right. So we are in question number 11. Totally, we have 30 questions for today. Actually, 35 because 10 questions are on menti. So we'll get started. Now, next one is easy peasy. Describe how, describe the need for resources for human survival. Three marks. This just came, came two years back in 2020, right? So why do we need resources? Very simple and easy. Yes, everyone. Quickly, why do we need resources? Yes, to fulfill basic needs, okay. Agricultural and industrial. Yes, Arun, can you repeat the question once again so that I'll be able to explain it to you because when you're saying I didn't explain, understand it, I'm not sure which question you're talking about, right? To satisfy human needs, okay. That is a very overview answer, yes. To make life easier and fulfill our needs. Very good, very good. I'm seeing a lot of answers coming in. All right. So when you're talking about three pointers, like you said, first and foremost, for agricultural activities, right? It makes us meet our needs. But that's how you will define a resource, right? Everything available in our environment that we use to satisfy our needs. Now, these needs need to be elaborated, okay? So those needs is what you have to elaborate. Don't just say needs and leave it. Your answer might be vague. So how are they satisfying our needs is what you need to answer. How are they satisfying it? They are giving us raw materials, right? Whether it's in the form of food or in for the industries, we are getting raw materials. Along with that, it is utilized for agricultural activities, right? So we know that for agricultural activities, we require resources. And along with that, it creates employment opportunities for us. So whether you're working at a manufacturing industry or whether you want to be a farmer, you know that you are getting all of this, right? So this is how we are dependent or how we are in the need for resources yes so we know that they are used as raw materials to satisfy our basic needs they are of course a source of agricultural activities which contributes to our economy and they provide employment opportunities yes very good by providing jobs and they are economically feasible exactly yes they are culturally acceptable also okay all right everybody so we are clear with this right yes so now we'll move on to question number 12. This was a very direct question. Three points you need to write more than enough. Three marks will be with you. Okay. But be very clear. If you just leave it at this point saying they are required for our basic needs, answer is incomplete. Right. You can write the multiple points that you want to write. So I'm getting some more pointers as well. Very good. You can write that. But at the same time, make sure that you have three points which are distinctly categorizing each other. Yes. So that is very, very important. So now we will move on to question number 12, everybody. Question number 12 on your screens. Very quickly. Rail transport suffers from some problems in India. Support this statement with examples. Yes. So you have three marks for this and this has come in 2020. What are the problems that rail uh, transport suffers from? Yes. This is a very easy question because trust me, see, most of us have traveled by, you know, rail, railways, right? So even if we relate to it, our answer will come very fast. Very good. Passengers don't buy tickets. Yes. Very good. Ma'am, damaging of railway property. Yes. Very good. Theft. Very good. Yes, there are gradient slopes. Okay. They are, of course. Uh, see, here we're talking about the problems, right? 
those are of course some generic problems but there are three very distinct ones which are mentioned in your textbook yes overcrowded damage of property no cleanliness unnecessary pulling of chain very good very good yes and they cannot be established in mountain regions so again they're not established in all right but we do know that there are some railroads which are established in certain parts right yes so in this case when you talk about problems faced in Indian Railway you need to start by saying about how there are people who travel without tickets and why is this a problem they cause financial uh, loss to the railways right and we know that this also affects the safety of the passengers who are paying tickets and traveling yes now we also know that railways are affected or they're subjected to a lot of theft and we know that there has been a lot of damage which is done to the property and of course sometimes there are some people who use the chains emergency chains unnecessarily which cause unnecessary delay right so these are three important major points that you need to list down and when you are listing it down start this way Although railways have become more important as a part of our national economy than other all means of transport, there are certain problems, right? And as you know, there are many passengers who travel without tickets, theft and damaging, and how people stop the trains, right? So these are the pointers you need to write. Focus on how I am structuring the answer. So how the answer needs to be structured is very, very important. Yes, you can mention about the damage as well, right? Yes. Okay. Use of chain. Okay. All right. Ma'am, railways can't be used in swamps of Gujarat and mountains. You can write this point, right? See, you can write these pointers. But here we are, again, if you are writing it, support the answer with examples. Okay. So you can stress on those pointers. No problem. That can also be mentioned as well. Yes. So now everybody, question number 13 on your screens, right? So we've had a look at 12 questions already. 13 questions, we have another 12 more questions to go. Then we have Menti. Yes? Okay. Ma, mere upar niche cha, uh, mere se upar aur niche wala chat. Nahi bacha, I am not ignoring all of you. You all know, right? See, for all of you, you have studied this. We are practicing and I might miss out on one or two chats, but that is not intentional, right? Sometimes what happens is the chat gets stuck on my screen, right? So at that point, what happens is that it becomes very tough. So that's also one of the reasons why sometimes I might not read your chat, but I'm not ignoring any of you. Yes. So very sorry about that. It's a very technical glitch. So now we will move on to the next one where... You need to suggest and explain three ways to protect land from degradation in various states in India. So three ways in which we can protect our land from degradation. Very simple and easy question. Three marks will be in your pocket. Trust me. Very good. Very good. Yes. Ma maps, I think maps is not there in today's class, okay? Maps, I will do it separately because I need some more time to do maps, which is why I think we will do a separate class, okay? Yes, I will do one more class. Very good, Garvet, very good, yes. Planting trees, very good, very good. So we know what are the causes of land degradation, right? We know that things that cause land degradation are deforestation, you have grazing, mining, all the other activities that lead to it. So how can we conserve it or how can we protect it? Aforestation by planting more trees and in mineral rich areas, we know that mining activities should be done, keeping environmental checks. And we know that there should be proper treatment and disposal from waste of industries, control on overgrazing. And we know that in certain arid areas, no, in arid regions where they don't receive a lot of water or rainfall, we know that planting, planting of shelter beds and in places which are prone to sand dunes, you grow thorny bushes, right? So as you know, basically these are some extra pointers that you can add. Yes, very good, Surbi. Stop any activity that can harm the environment, right? Yes. So these are some pointers that you can write on how or what suggestions, right? So explain any three ways. So you have all listed it down to me. You can write any three pointers on this and elaborate on it, okay? Now, one thing is don't just write three points saying stop overgrazing or, you know, stop activity that makes, um, you know, that affects the environment, 
That answer is incomplete. Okay. Whatever you are suggesting, say if I am saying afforestation, I need to say how. Okay. Because they have asked me to explain three ways. Right. So how am I going to do it? By planting more trees that will of course help with you know proper management of grazing can extend. Yes. Control over grazing. So how exactly? You can also write about how overgrazing can affect the land. Right. And how controlling it will improve the situation. So try to always elaborate it because if the term explain comes, no, they will be looking for a justification. Yes. All right. Okay. Yes, everyone. Are we clear? I think the chat is again stuck on my screen for all of you who might tell me, right? Make law. Yes. Okay. Let me just go ahead. All right. Okay. Thank you for that, Abhimanyu. Thank you so much. So now we will move on to next one. That is question number 14. See, I am not spending too much time on explaining concepts because today is all about practicing concepts, right? So we'll have a separate maybe doubt clearing class and everything, but I'll try my best to accommodate it, right? Yes, Avi, just give me two minutes. We'll finish this question and do it. Okay. All right. Now the next question again on your screens, right? Describe the importance of judicious use of resources. Why is it important to properly use resources? Three marks everybody, three marks. It's come in last year itself. And trust me, we have already looked at this question. We spoke about it when we spoke about how we can use the resources wisely, right? So this is just an extension from that question. It's just an extension. Ma'am, judicious means how to use it wisely. Wise use of resources, right? Or how I can use it economically. Very good for equal distribution of resources, for sustainable development, resources are benefited. Very good. Resource planning is what it is meant. Very good for planning, uh, for balancing it out for a country. Yes, very good. Very good. Lot of correct answers coming in, right? So we know that there are various ways. Again, indiscriminate use of resources can cause depletion of, we've already discussed this. So as we know, the main thing we need to write is that our country is one amongst the least energy energy efficient countries, right? And we need to adopt a cautious approach or a wise way in which we can use our limited energy resources. And we know that over utilization or if improper consumption of it can lead to environmental problems, which is why it is important to plan resources or do resource planning. Because at the end of the day, we must also think about the future. So sustainability is the key, right? So sustainability is going to be the key. Very good. We need to save it for the future. Yes, very good. So now we'll move on to question number 15 after which we will take a five minute break. Okay, we'll take a five minute break after this particular question. Then we are going to move on to the, you know, next set of four mark and five mark questions. Then it is going to be mentee time. But I'll tell you, four mark questions are very simple. Okay, they are very simple because you will have four subparts to that. And all you need to do is to answer each subpart correctly. You will get one, one mark. Okay, your three mark questions are the tough ones. I'll tell you. Menti kab hoga? Half an hour mein menti hoga. Theek hai? Half an hour mein. Last one. Efficient means of transports are prerequisite for fast development of the country. Support this statement with an example. Yes? Why is or how do we say that efficient means of transport are necessary or it is a prerequisite for the development of a country? Right? Ma'am, road transport, okay. Ma'am, menti kya hota hai? First time here, oh, amazing, amazing. So, Garvet, if you're new to our class, I mean, the first time you're doing menti. So, basically, it's a live platform, okay? Live quiz platform, where you just need to go type on it, and then you have to put a quiz name, I mean, the quiz code, and you'll be able to play the quiz with all of your friends, yes? Okay. All right, thank you, Thunder Tech, thank you. Yes. Ma'am, menti full set hoga? Nay. Menti ke liye mainly MCQ. One mark questions I'm taking. 
Ma'am, pre-board marathons. So this is as a part of your pre-board marathons, Harman, wherein we'll help you out with the PYQs. Okay? Yes. All right. Ma'am, it makes things move faster in airways. Yes. Fast transport increases e efficiency in trade. See, the word trade is what we are looking for in our answer. Right? Because as you know, right, we know that there is a place where things are going to be produced and or what do you say this is where there is the supply that is happening where I am producing it right and this is where there is demand that means this is where I need to take it to. Now if I am a country where I am supplying good number of goods I must be able to transport it right that means that for developing my country import and export is very important and we know that the pace at which this import export happens we know that this right here is transport is extremely necessary yes so this right here is super important yes it helps in faster transportation and it is a part of the tertiary sector yes so as you know efficient means of transport is uh, contributes to the development because development depends on two things development depends upon production of goods and services but if i'm producing all these goods and services and i'm not giving it anywhere my country is not really developing right which is why we know that transportation is a means by which i can efficiently transport this and take it to people like traders and therefore if a country has to develop trading across countries need to happen and for trading we require transport yes so this right here is very very important all right so are we clear with how we need to write this answer are we i will answer your question everybody but but first we'll take a five minute break and then we will come back and i will answer your doubts all right yes ma'am should we connect it with communication you can but the question is talking about efficient means of transport are prerequisites right although you know that both transport and communication are your lifelines of national economy you know that here the question is specific to transport so if it is specific to transport then you can stick to that but you can add one sentence on communication as well yes all right everyone so we are done with 15 questions 10 more questions and then we have menti right so as you know take five minute break stay hydrated drink a lot of water do some stretching walk around because see sst can be a very heavy chap subject right and especially when we are looking at geography lot of things to remember so take a five minute break i will come back and then we will go ahead and do the rest of the questions yes and then after the 10 questions we will then be having menti okay all right everyone so take a five minute break and i'll come back
Yes, hello everybody. Okay, am I audible to everyone? Am I audible? Are you able to see me, hear me? Everything is good to go. Screen is visible. Yes, okay. All right, very good. Are we feeling refreshed? Are we feeling energetic? Mom, yes. Five minute break really helped me, right? Sometimes what happens and we've realized over time is that when we take classes continuously for all of you, no? You guys also, what happens is that you get tired. You will be like, ma'am, we want to listen, but we are sleeping, right? And at the end of the day, class will not be effective if you don't take those breaks that are needed and necessary, right? I can see someone was like, ma'am, agli bar aapko prank karenge ki nahi nahi, we can't hear you. Don't do that. We are also short of time, no? Your time is also very precious to us. So very quickly, everybody, if you have just joined, if this is the first time you're watching my video, do not forget to like this video. Do not forget to share it with your friends. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button. Lot of new bachas in my class at all times and you never subscribe, which is why you know, now you know, right? Especially 9 and 10 is super serious. So do not forget to like and subscribe. And somebody was telling me ma'am we have only 80 live watching how to hit 200 likes we are already there we are 160 likes okay 40 more likes and I know we can do it and I know my bachas will help me with this share this with your friends if you still have not liked the video now is the time to like the video right okay and here's a quick reminder for everybody as you know we have parent club right and we know that Cheta ma'am comes in and she does this amazing thing where she talks about some very very important things that are needed yes so last time as you know we spoke about how to improve your curiosity here as you see this time around, because it's December and it's the new year time, we are going to be talking about set, execute and achieve. How you can do goal setting and keep resolutions that will last the year and that will not, you know, go away in one or two days, right? And how your parents can also help you out with it, right? So please make sure that you register for this. It's on 21st of December at 6 p.m. There are very limited seats for this, okay? So go ahead and register because you you will understand and you can tell your parents also. Mama, Papa, just give me half an hour on 21st. We learn about goal setting and how us as a family can do it together. Right? Okay. So don't forget to register. Link is there in the description box. Okay? Now again, all the others who has gone ahead and said, Ma'am, break diya, to humne, you know, baat karna shuru kiya. So everybody, please make sure that you all stay focused now. Okay? 10 questions. We are moving on to the 4 mark questions, everybody. Yes? I know, weightage is already given by Ankita ma'am. The video is there in the description. You can check it. I mean, it's there on our channel. You can check it out. Yes. So I need all of you focus back on what we were learning about. Do not get distracted. Okay. Again, like I told you, we will do maybe 15 more minutes of question discussion. After that, we will do menti. We will wind up and in two hours, if you see, you have recalled your geography syllabus. Right? You have recalled your entire geography syllabus. So all you need is to give me that two hours of time. No, you should not get distracted in this gap. If you get distracted, then studying gets affected. Which is why constantly I tell you, stay focused. Yes? Okay. So now moving on to the next question. Now these are paragraph based questions. Okay? And trust me, this looks scary, but it's very simple. So what I will recommend all of you to do is I'll move outside, take a screenshot of this. And when we are solving the question, you can refer to that screenshot. It will help you, right? Because the question says, read the text below and answer the following questions. All right. And as you know, this right here is an excerpt from manufacturing industries. And we're talking about how manufacturing industries not only help in modernizing agriculture, which forms the backbone of our economy, they also help reduce the heavy dependence of people. So I am not going to read this whole thing for you. Everybody take a screenshot and give me a quick thumbs up, right? Give me the th quick thumbs up. Ma'am, case based is one of the easiest. Yes. You are absolutely right. This is the easiest set of questions we are going to solve today. So take a screenshot and let me know. I'll move outside. And as you can see, this right here is from 2021, right? Ma'am, I'm staying focused, but moderator uncle, koi nahi, koi nahi. Vanshika, Tanoj, everybody stay focused in class. I can see Hardik, Shivani also getting digressed. So everyone stay focused, okay? 
Okay, all of you have taken the screenshot because I'm going to change it. Yes? Ma'am, comprehension is very easy to answer and interpret. Yes, the answer is there. Now, if it is blur, what you can do is improve the settings in your phone. You will have to change the settings to maybe 780p and then you can uh, take a screenshot. Okay? Very good. Very good. All right. So now, as you know, this is going to be the paragraph. Now, based on this, we have our question. Okay? Yes. Now, the question is, Manufacturing industries fall dash and agriculture in dash. Is it A, primary, secondary, sec or is it secondary, tertiary, primary, tertiary or secondary, prime, primary sector? What is the correct answer to this? The answer was there in the paragraph only. If you read that paragraph, if you go back to that paragraph, we'll be able to do. Abhimanyu, is it possible that we run a YouTube poll? Can we do a YouTube poll for the saying ABCD? Is it possible? Can you let me know in the notes? Yes, very good my bachas, very good. YouTube poll is also live. I am just checking on my phone also. Yes, the poll is live on the YouTube. You will be able to answer there as well. So that I get a good understanding of what percentage of people have got the answer. Yes? Okay, everybody. So we have 30 votes in. Everybody else, quickly vote. Yes, ma'am, it's possible. Yes, yes. Very good, very good. Hardik and Rahul, stay focused in class. Shivani, smiley queen, need you to stay focused. Otherwise, you might get timed out and we don't want that, no? Okay. So I hope all of you have answered the poll. Yes? Okay. No problem, no problem. Okay, all right. So, can, shall we close the poll, please? And let's see the results. Okay, good evening. Good evening. Ma'am, galti kar diya. Ma'am, we can answer without reading paragraph only. Yes, that is the best, right? So, we know that in this case, the correct answer is option D, like how all of you have marked it. Manufacturing industries fall in the secondary sector, while your agriculture falls in the primary sector. Now with this, if you see, you have scored one out of one mark, one out of four marks, right? Super simple. Now moving on to the next one. Manufacturing industries provide job opportunities to reduce dependence on agriculture. Identify which sector of the following belongs where. So you have a match the following and now what you need to do is to figure out the correct match. Now I tell this to you in biology, I tell this to you in sciences, right? And I tell this to you in SST also. When you have matched the following, write it down first and then you find the match. So Abhimanyu, can we have the poll on screen please? Let's have the poll for the students. Yes, this is mentioned in the paragraph also, right? It's already mentioned in the paragraph. This should be a very easy one, right? Very quickly, everybody. My bachas, quickly. Do we have the poll, please? Yes, poll is live. Take your time. Answer this question. Don't rush. And I can see that a lot of you have just joined the class. If you have just joined the class, please make sure that you like this video. You share this video with your friends, right? We have a name. We want to reach 200 likes today. And I know you can help me do this. So quickly, everybody, like this video. Okay. All right. All right, everyone. Okay. So 89 votes are in. Yes. Very good. All right. Okay. Yes. Hello, Dynamic Gaming. Hello. All right. Okay. So shall we go ahead and close the poll, please? I hope all of you have voted. Yes, well done. 100 votes and 73% of you have got voted for the correct answer. So the correct answer here is option B, right? So here as we know, when we talk about garment production, we know that it comes mainly under the secondary sector, right? So your primary, secondary, tertiary sectors and quaternaries based on how we use and how we produce things, right? It's as simple as that. So we also learned about it when we used to learn the agriculture chapter as well, how we have the primary activity, secondary activity, keeping that basic idea in mind, you will be able to do it. Yes. So now if you see, we are talking about how 
garment production right so here we see that garment production here is a secondary activity while research and development is quaternary which means that when we say it's quaternary it is not really part of the primary secondary sector okay when we say we're talking about research and development we are using some raw materials we are using some other produce then we are bringing it together and then we are trying to see right are we having a proper thing do we want to build something new so yes garment is jewelry kind of stuff or it could be your simple basic clothes as well textile and garments right so which is why this is your match then you have banking okay and banking right here as you know is a tertiary thing because we are dealing with the transport the trading the money and mining as we know is where we are procuring the raw material which in itself is a primary sector garment production that is there garment as the name suggests right so that's nothing but garments that are there yes okay so now let's move on to the third one quickly everybody let's have the poll on screen please which of the following does not help in modernizing agriculture right so we have manufacturing farm equipment providing unskilled labor force supplying fertilizers and pesticides or producing tube wells and pumps and sprinklers right everybody quickly the poll is live on your screens it's there on the live chat very quickly what do you think is the correct answer now, if some of you are watching this video, maybe much later after the live session has been done, please make sure that you pause this video, try to answer, then you go ahead and you, you know, forward to see what the correct answer is. Yes. Now, but Charles, I can see a lot of parallel spam happening. Our chat moderator can time you out or in worst cases can block you. So please be careful. If that happens, I am helpless. Okay. So I've been telling you all to concentrate in class and I can see that some of you are not. So very now, our moderator will take strict action. Yes, very good. Very good. Okay, then. Well done, everybody. Well done. So let's quickly go ahead and close the polls and let's see what the result is. This is a very simple question, right? I mean, if you know nothing and you think of it normally also, you will be able to get the answer to this. So Abhimanyu, let's close the polls, please. Yes, Abhinav, hello. Okay, so let's please close the polls. All right, everybody, the polls are more or less done, I think. I think the poll is still running. Let me see if I can close the poll. Okay, so now I can see more or less most of you have got the answer. The correct answer here, I can see that most of you have got B. Yes, the correct answer here is option B, right? Because we know that providing unskilled labor force. See, we're not even talking about providing a labor force that is skilled. Somebody who's unskilled, who does not know how exactly to go about practicing agriculture will not help in making agriculture modern or efficient, right? So here mainly we're focusing on how it can be done at a broad scale, at a commercial scale, but thereby manufacturing farm equipment, providing with fertilizers, pesticides, and irrigation methods helps in modernizing it right making it more efficient now moving on to the next one in order to attract foreign firms a country needs to develop what do they need to develop agrarian facilities cultivable lands media facilities or infrastructure so very quickly everybody can we have the poll on screen please can we have the poll abhimanyu for the children so that they can vote which among the following is the correct answer now, Prince and those of you who have just joined the class, as you know, right, we have some case-based questions, four mark questions which come based on a paragraph. So, we are solving that, okay? And so far, you guys have got three out of four correctly. This is the fourth question that is there, which we are looking at based on the paragraph. Now, a lot of you, if you still have not liked this video, you know what to do. No, I can see that we still have a way to go. We have around 34, 33 likes to go. So go ahead and like the video. Don't forget. 72 votes are in and I can see most of you are leaning towards the correct answer. So very proud of all of you. Very proud. Yes. All right. Okay. Some of uh, Abhinav, your pre boards are from 21st. I have not studied well. I'm sure that you've studied very regular to classes as well. So I'm sure that you would have already studied and done a good job. Just be more confident, right? And if you want to come back and revisit some of our videos, you can always do that. Let's close the polls, please. 
Yes. So for all of you who are feeling scared about your pre-boards, don't be. Okay. I know it's a very nerve-wracking place to be. I used to. I was extremely scared. So it's okay. Fear is normal. But it's also important to go ahead and be confident and tell yourself that you have studied. Right. So RJ and everybody, don't worry. Yes. Very good, everyone. Very good. Most of you have got the correct answer. The correct answer here is option D. What are agrarian facilities? It is with respect to agriculture, right? So here we're talking about agriculture and providing more modern facilities for agriculture. Yes. So the correct answer is infrastructure facilities. Now let's move on to the next question, which is also case based, right? So here again, we have a paragraph. Okay. Now next one does not have polls. It requires a little bit of answering from your end. So this is going to be a four mark question, which has three sub parts. Okay. Now here again, have a look at this. Everybody, we use different materials and services in our life. Some of these are available in immediate surroundings. Nah, 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 nah. So much is there on screen. So take a picture. Okay. Everybody quickly take a screenshot, take a picture. If the screen is blurred, improve your settings, right? And then I'll come back. So I'll move out so that you can take a picture. Have you all taken it? Yes. Give me a quick thumbs up, everybody. Give me a quick thumbs up. Okay. Somebody was asking me, ma'am, what is infrastructure? They are the basic things like roads, buildings, right? And, uh, you know, it, um, what do you say? Things like hospitals, supermarkets, which makes it very easy. Like facilities are built for people, right? So that is what we mean by infrastructure in very simple words. So the first question is so easy. This is a one mark question. Okay. This is only for one mark. Explain the necessity of means of transport in modern times. What is the need to have transport in modern times? Very simple. Yes. Hello to all my bachas who have joined. Lot of new names. Right. So welcome to the class. Welcome everyone. Welcome. To make life easier. Yes. In very simple words, it is to make life easier. Right. Or else how can we say... Import export. Yes, very good. Yes, my passage was too long to read. I know that is why I told you to take a screenshot of the passage, right? It makes it easy to facilitate movement of goods. Exactly. So basically, if you see, right, it helps. It allows people to trade with one another, which is necessary for the economy to grow, right? So it helps in transporting for the demand and supply that is there. It helps in transporting goods and thereby allowing people to trade. And if it's allowing people to trade it also helps in improving the economy yes so it's allowing it to trade globally very good so write the answer down very important now moving to the next one easy peasy one mark enumerate the means of transport there are four means of transport you need to write them down you will get one mark for this yes AC study blogs, I think you are new to my class. So mainly I teach in English, right? So wherever you're not able to understand, I'll try to do it in Hindi because at the end of the day, all of you know, you have to write answers in English. No, which is why it's very important. I know I want to teach in English, but try to get more comfortable wherever you're not able to understand. I'll teach in Hindi. Okay. I'll mix English there. Don't worry. Yes. Okay. Hello, Bhavna. Hello. Roadway, waterway, airway, one more. One more should be there, no? Yes, very good. Four are there. Roadways, railways, waterways and airways. You have now got two out of four marks easily. Now your last one is again something we have already discussed earlier, right? What are the efficient means of transport prerequisite? Some of you are asking me, what do we mean by prerequisite? So what should already be there to make transport efficient or what are the basics of knowing, right? Or what are the basics that we should know for the development or that should be there for the development of the country, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. Yes. Roadways. Yes. Okay. Pipeline. All right. All right. 
efficient means of transport yes we've already discussed this part right so we know that if when there is products that are being there when there are you know goods and services we know that there are there are things which automatically move from supply side to demand side it will not automatically move right which is why transportation is necessary and these again facilitate for traders which of course we know that at the end of the day this paces up the economy right for development that is there yes Bhavna, I told you infrastructure are the basic physical things like roads buildings other facilities that you build for the people right so that is what we mean by infrastructure so now we will move on to question number 18 everybody on your screens take a quick screenshot this is for four marks again the previous question that was for two marks so this right here was for two marks and if you write all the pointers you will get four out of four easily yes so now we will move on to question number 18 okay question number 18 everyone on your screens yes take a screenshot and let me know quickly Have you all taken a screenshot? Okay. Yes, okay. Nitisha, developed resources are resources which are developed, right? Or wherein we use these resources in a useful way. So like for example, if you talk about maybe coal, right? We know that how we use coal, in what form we use coal, where we use coal, we call this as a developed resource. So here these are again MCQs, okay? What were ghouls or kuls? A, they were water diversion channels, they were road diversion channels, they were local people of Rajasthan or these were the only two wells which were available in Rajasthan, right? Very quickly everybody, this is a poll question and uh, Abhimanyu, can we have the poll on screen please? Can we please have the poll on screen? Everyone, this is very simple, don't get confused, it was there, this was there in the paragraph that's why i keep telling you take a screenshot refer to the paragraph and you will be able to answer yes nitisha i've already answered your question on developed resource but i hope you've seen that part right ma'am can you give me the pdf yes it will be available for all of you on our telegram channel so if you've still not subscribed to our telegram channel link is there in the description box you will be able to get it from there okay yes all right very good everybody very good yes 57 votes in everyone quickly vote my bachas and we shall go ahead okay now lot of channels lot of spam happening see let the others study everyone please stay focused yes okay all right so let's quickly wind up the polls please shall we wind up the polls so everyone i hope you have all voted I'm not able to see the chat on screen. That's why I'm looking down. Okay. Ma'am, whether there is menti, there is menti. Just give me, we'll finish this up and we'll go to menti. Okay. All right. So a lot of you have most, almost 70% of you have answered option A. And yes, we know that goals or curls are mainly water diversion channels, which normally we find in the mountainous regions, right? So in the hills and in the mountainous regions, we find it where they create it, especially in the Western Himalayan region, right? Now moving on to the next one. Where is water roof, uh, roof water, rainwater harvesting system practiced commonly found? So is it found in Jaisalmer, Bengal, Rajasthan or Western Himalayas? Quickly everybody, can we have the poll please? Yes, poll please on YouTube. Now, uh, Avi, I know you were asking me about H HVJ. I'm not able to remember the expansion to be honest. But we know that it is a cross state gas line which was built, right? And we know that this was built to supply the fertilizer company that was there. So I'm not able to come up with the names but mainly we find it in Uttar Pradesh. Yes? So I hope I have answered your question. But I think if you search for the expansion, you will be able to find it, right? Okay, 50 votes are in, I mean, I can see almost 70, 80 votes. This is a very easy question, guys. One mark you will get from this only. So all these paragraph based questions, you will be able to score marks very easily. You have nothing to worry about, right? 
Yes, all right. 93 votes in. Shall we quickly close the polls, please? Yes. Very good, very good. Yes, all right. So as we know, the correct answer here is option C. Now let's move on to the next one, right? India tracing the sophisticated hydraulic, uh, tracing the sophisticated hydraulic structures to which era? That means when did India literally start using these hydraulic structures? It was back to the ancient era, modern era, Mesozoic era or Christian era. So everybody quickly please make sure that you go ahead and you vote. The options are there on your screen. So Abhimanyu, can we please have the question? Yes. Yes. All right. Everybody, can we have the poll please on the screen? I can see the answers coming in. Now, some of you were asking me, ma'am, in the previous question, why can't it be Jaisalmer and why not? Why is it Rajasthan? Jaisalmer is focusing on one part, right? But this is something you observe across the state. It's not only in one place you find it. You find it everywhere, right? Which is why the correct answer is Rajasthan, okay? Yes, a lot of you are very new to my class. I can see that a lot of you are here. Welcome to the class. Welcome and I hope that all of you are excited for today's class. Yes? I am not able to see the chat at the moment which is why I am looking down. Yes, all right. Okay, I think the chat has gone from my screen altogether, Abhimanyu. I am not able to see anything. Um, Abhimanyu, I am very sorry. I am not able to see anything on my screen at the moment. Students, just give me a moment. Yes. Okay. All right, everybody. So very quickly, please make sure that you just stay with me for some time because the chat has disappeared from my screen. So I will have to, you know, get it back on screen. Up until then, I hope all of you have answered. 116 votes are here, 120 votes. Abhimanyu, can we close the poll, please? Yes, thank you for that. I'm able to see the chat now. Yes, yes, okay. So let's end the poll first and then I think you can have the chat on screen. Okay, 123 votes are in. Very good, everybody. Very good. Yes, all right. So now as I can see that the correct answer here is option this is from water resources. For those of you who are like, ma'am, where this question aaya hai? Yeah, this is from water resources, right? And let's close the poll, please. Lot of you are very new to my live as well. So I hope all of you have liked this video, yes? Please make sure you like the video and you subscribe to our channel. If you are new, trust me, we have got you covered. So please make sure that you subscribe. 68% has got the answer correct. From ancient era, we find the hydraulic structures. Okay, all right. So now, of course, some of you are asking me, ma'am, what is replenishment, right? Or what are these replenishable resources? Replenish, as the name suggests, is something you can replenish, put back, right? So basically, they are nothing but your renewable sources of energy, like your solar, your water energy. That is what we mean by replenishable, right? That means I can replenish the soil. If I say I replenish the soil, I'm able to bring something back to the soil. That means it is renewable, okay? Yes, very good, Bachas. Very good. Now, moving on to the next one. Fourth question. What is the most common use of rooftop rainwater harvesting? It is used for storing water for growing vegetables. For harvest, uh, it is harvested mainly, uh, I mean, it is practiced commonly to store drinking water. It is practiced commonly to supply water in industries or to store water for cattle only. Yes, everyone, quickly in the chat. Okay. All right. Okay. So can we please quickly go ahead and have the poll on screen, please? Ma'am, it is not clear. Poll will come soon, Bachas. Poll will come soon. 
Ma'am, what is commercial farming and intensive farming? We actually have a question much later on this. But commercial farming is a farming that you do at a large scale, right? So large scale with agricultural implements, with modern tools. That is what is commercial farming. Especially like if you look at your plantations, your tea plantation, your coffee plantation. They are all examples of commercial farming. Intensive farming is normally what we see amongst the farmers in our country. Where they will own one short two piece of land. And in that small piece of land, they must be able to get high produce, okay? So it means if I have one acre of land, I must be able to get 10,000 kgs of rice. That is how the demand is there, right? So in order to achieve that, they will be using fertilizers, chemicals and everything to achieve that. So that is what we call as intensive subsistence farming especially, okay? Ma'am, will life class be there every day? Yes, life class is there every day. Right now, we have the 1000 PYQ series going on where every day at 7 p.m. with one subject, we will be solving 20 most important PYQs. And with SST, we will be doing some extra questions. We'll do like around 25 to 30 questions. Okay? Yes. Not to common people. That is mainly for big industries, Arjun. It's mainly for big industries. Okay? Yes, all right. Hello to all my new bachas who have joined. Go ahead, like the video. Don't forget to like, right? You need to like. We are on 199 likes. So one more like and we hit 200, which was our target for the day. My menti is there. Yes, Zarur menti is there. After this, we have menti. So can we please co close the polls, please? Can we please close the polls? Yes, in the meanwhile, as you answer right as you know i can see that a lot of you who are here most of you have got the correct answer correct answer here is option a no we don't do rainwater harvesting to store water to grow vegetables but rather the water is filtered and then it is used for as drinking water right which is why the correct answer here is option b now let's move on to question number 19 everyone for those of you who are still joining for some time you are coming for the first time subscribe to our channel don't worry quickly subscribe yes biology ka bhi life class karenge zarur zarur okay all right so now next one everybody take a screenshot of this give me a thumbs up and then i'm going to get started with the questions yes give me a thumbs up bachas Okay, all right. So those of you, I hope all of you have taken the screenshot, right? Because this will help you with the answer. Now again, we have fill in the blanks and we have MCQ. So we're going to have the poll on screen. India stands second as a world producer of sugar, but occupies first place in the production of Gur and Khandasari. Sugar industry comes in which group of industries? Is it a public sector, a cooperative sector? Is it a private sector or a joint sector? Yes, so please make sure you go ahead and you vote. For those of you who still haven't taken the screenshot, you can take a screenshot right now, right? Quickly everybody, take a screenshot. Pre-board SST, those of you who have it tomorrow, revise your history lessons as well, right? Nationalism in India, super, super important. Revise it, yes? Making of global world and nationalism in Europe. Revise your history lessons thoroughly. In civics also, please make sure you go through power sharing, federalism. They are all very important chapters. Geography, Kato, your revision is already done. Go through the maps that are important, especially from water resources. You will have to mark. And of course, from agriculture, you will have identification. And in your history also, go through your map work thoroughly okay yes all right everybody so quickly here's the question on your screens i hope all of you have answered right 65 votes are in but i can see that more number of you are there so jaldi 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 vote kar lo yes all right okay Yes, and let's close the poll, please. I can see that we can quickly, we can start pacing it up a little. It's already 9 p.m. And I want to, you know, get to Menti also very fast. All right. So most of you have voted for option D, right? I mean, option B. And the correct answer here is option B. Because we know that when we talk about the sugar industry, it comes in the cooperative sector. And what is a cooperative sector? It is one which is owned and operated by a collective of people right or a group of people basically i can simply write 
group of people. So here we see that there are some people who will provide the raw material, some people who will come ahead and they will you know procure it, process it, which is why there are a group of people involved. So now moving on to, I gave the answer for the next one also, but nonetheless you can tell me the answer. Cooperative sector is owned and operated by producers or suppliers of raw materials, workers or both. Option 2 says that this sector pulls in resources and shares the profit and losses proportionately. This sector is jointly run by state and individuals or a group of individuals. So which among the following statements are incorrect from the options, right? Find the incorrect one. What is incorrect? Is it one, one and two, two, three or both? Okay. Ma'am, uh, co commerce and economics ka classes, it's done actually on the channel. You can check out the SST playlist. You will be able to find all of it, right? Yes. What do you think is the correct answer? All right. All of you have given me the answer. So I think I will go ahead and mark this, right? The correct answer is option C, which is only three. Because when we talk about cooperative sector, it is owned and operated by producers or suppliers of raw materials, workers or both. Right? So there are a group of people running it. But here we know that this pools in resources and shares profits. Right? So these two statements are correct. Now moving on to the third one. Why are sugar mills, why sugar mills are perfectly convenient for sectors in which industry is owned by suppliers or producers of raw materials or workers or both? With reference to the context, infer. Is it because this industry is seasonal in nature due to its efficient methods of production, due to its better transport system or because the raw materials are bulky? What is the correct answer here everyone? Quickly. Yes. All right everybody. Jaldi, jaldi, jaldi. Give the answer. Sixteen votes in. I need more votes to come in very soon. Yes. Quickly, we are talking about sugar mills, which now we know is part of the cooperative sector, right? Which is run by what? It is run by people who are, you know, suppliers of raw materials and the workers. Why do you think that it comes in this category of cooperative sectors, right? I can see that there is a competition between two options that is A and B. And let me tell you, Whoever has narrowed it down between A and B, well done. But one of these answers are incorrect. Of course, it one of it will be incorrect, right? Yes, all right. Okay. Okay, Achint, I will definitely look into it, right? But I think the one shot is already available by Ankita ma'am on the channel. So you can definitely check that video out. It's already there that which she has done, right? Okay, so can we close the polls, please? Yes, all right. Ma'am, am I late? Yes, you're a little bit late because we're done with about 19 questions. Five more and then we're switching to Menti, right? So Abhimanyu, we can close the polls. All right, very good. So there was a tight competition between A and B, but the correct answer is A. Because this particular industry, especially the sugar industry, it is seasonal in nature, right? We know that based on its availability of raw materials and the procurement, it is seasonal. Which is why we see that the correct answer here is option A, not option B, that it is efficient in production. It is efficient, but the reason behind this is option A. Now, last one. Why is there a high concentration of sugar mills in Uttar Pradesh? Because Uttar Pradesh is the largest producer of sugar cane, because labor is easily available in Uttar Pradesh due to high consumption in Uttar Pradesh or is it all of the above? Quickly everybody, answer this. Yes? Quickly, what do you think is the answer for why there are more sugar mills in Uttar Pradesh? Yes? Quickly everyone, quickly. Yes, all right. Okay, I'm not waiting for this. I will not have the poll. I'm just going, okay, I think Abhimanyu has put the poll. So quickly, Bachas, answer on the poll. See, we are done with, I think, 20 questions already. This is the last one. Then five more questions on five mark ones. That again is very direct. Again, very easy ones, which you just need to know how to structure it. And then we'll switch to Menti. 
okay and that way if you see i have covered your two mark questions three mark questions four mark and we will be doing five marks also right so we have covered a good base of questions today yes all right everyone i can see that the lo lot of answers are there already all right so can we uh, close the votes please shall we close the votes All right, Abhimanyu, we can close the votes and well done. Oh, everybody's like, ma'am, labor is easily available and everything. But the main answer is option A, because Uttar Pradesh is the largest producer of sugar cane, which is why we have the highest concentration of it, right? Which is why this right here is the correct answer. All right. So now moving on to question number 20. Now question number 20 to question number 25 are going to be 5 mark answers. Alright. So here we will be looking at all the pointers that you need to write for these questions. If you get 5 mark questions. And you know that they are your descriptive type questions. Right. So they are going to be your descriptive type questions. So let's quickly move on and then have a look. Yes. Now here as you can see we are talking about why the economic strength of a country why do we say that a country is a good economy or a bad economy based on the development or how is it measured by development of manufacturing industries so what does manufacturing industries have anything to do with the development or the economic strength of the country now i can see that a lot of you are saying and there's a lot of distraction on the chat. But for students who want to study and do well in their board exams, they will not get distracted. Now, I've been constantly reminding all of you on the chat to be more serious, to be more focused, right? And if you are not paying attention, it is your loss, right? So everybody from now on, our moderator will block your account if it continues, yes? So everybody stop getting distracted. I am extremely serious at this point, okay? All right, very good. Yes, it reduces dependency on agriculture. It brings in foreign exchange. It improves the GDP. Yes, all right. Ma'am, please explain this in Hindi. Zarur, zarur, I Hindi mein explain karungi. Yes, exactly. Ma'am, not clear. For those of you who don't know the answer to this, don't worry. I'll explain this to you, right? It provides employment. Yes. Okay. Lots of love to everyone here. Ma'am, what are the important pointers? I will be telling you. But I want you to attempt in writing this first, right? Yes. All right, so I'll tell you what this is. How does it improve, right? Or why are manufacturing industries important? So see, like we know, manufacturing industries are a strong indicator of the country's economy or how developed the country is, right? Because if there are more manufacturing industries, this means that this will provide more employment, right? So more people will be employed. And if more people are employed, then this will increase per capita income. What does this mean? So that means that people will now start be able to make money by themselves and they'll be able to fend themselves right so that is one thing secondly we also see that modernizing agriculture right so modernizing agriculture which actually forms the basis right this right here forms the foundation or the basis of the economy and if we modernize agriculture, we find efficient ways to practice agriculture and agricultural productivity. We know that agriculture provides the raw materials for so many of these industries, right? So the raw materials are set, your industry will, you know, work well. So these are two points. Now the next one that you need to talk about is how making sure that you have good amount of produce. If you are manufacturing a lot of goods, if you have a lot of manufacturing industries, we know that it brings in export. We can export, we can sell it to the other countries. And if that is the case, it also improves trading, right? It also brings in foreign exchange. And we know that there are countries which will be dependent on certain raw materials and or they might, what they will require is they will require finished products. So this in turn will bring in money, right? Because now people will want to purchase things from you. Rather than us purchasing from others, they will want to purchase it from you, right? And at the end of the day, we know that 
making sure that we have more number of manufacturing industries will diversify and solidify our position and this will also bring down regional disparities because now we know that there are some people who have money and there's an economic disparity very disparity very clearly right so this will bring down now if the people who don't have opportunities don't have enough money they are employed then they will also be able to afford a lot of things this in turn will boost the whole economy right ma'am why is foreign exchange needed see think of it very simply if you are a country which has everything with you right and if you trade with other people you sell it's kind of like imagine if you had a i'll give you a very simple thing imagine if you had a house i mean you have a house and in your house for your maybe for your neighborhood or everybody you have a lot of vegetables and fruits growing in but there are other people who might have one or two things okay they they might have uh, maybe some spices they might some someone else will have sugar somebody else will have maybe some tea powder but you have all the vegetables which is like very very important for nutrition and survival so if you have that strong hold right then you can take what you want right so you already have everything then oh i can maybe borrow some money i mean i can borrow some tea leaves from here i can maybe take some sugar from here then i can maybe take some milk from here i can make my you know i can make tea out of it i can make a different product out of it and then i can have people over so think about why a country would want to trade right if i have everything why should i trade you will you can be self sufficient it's also important but trading is necessary so that you can bring in more goods right again bringing in more goods trading with other countries having good you know relationships with them also helps in strengthening the economy and the bond because it's not like every country is self sufficient right we do need things from others which is why trading is necessary right it's very very important okay all right everybody so this is how you will write the answer for this ma'am please explain this in hindi theek hai so is question mein basically a country ka economic strength hum kaise decide kare ki a country economically very strong hai aur manufacturing industries mein iska kya kaam hai aur kaise ye contribute karta hai uska pointers hame likhna chahiye so first and foremost hame pata hai ki agriculture hai wo a country ke economy ka foundation hota hai isiliye agriculture practice ko thoda aur modernize karna chahiye taki farmers ka zyada reliance nahi hai right to unka फार्मर्स जो होते हैं हमारे कंट्री में लेबर्स की तरह काम करते हैं बट लेकिन अगर हम कंपेयर करते हैं मे बी विथ यू एस और एनी बडी फार्मर्स एक बिजनेस की तरफ अपने एग्रीकल्चर प्रैक्टिस को रन करते हैं इसीलिए ऐसे उनको मॉडर्नाइज करने का जरूरी है उसके बाद इंडस्ट्रियल डेवलपमेंट की जरूरत है ताकि मोर एम्प्लॉयमेंट अपॉर्चुनिटीज हो ताकि लोगों को अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट और पॉवर्टी से बचा सकते हैं अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट एक्सपोर्टिंग जब हम हमारे पास गुड्स होते हैं उनको एक्सपोर्ट जब हम करते हैं वो ग्लोबल ट्रेड और कॉमर्स को इम्प्रूव करता है और ये बहुत ही नेसेसरी है कि हम फॉरेन करेंसी को भी इनकॉर्पोरेट करें ताकि हमारे ग्लोबल स्टैंड पॉइंट में हमारी कंट्री की इकोनॉमी बूस्ट हो ठीक है और लास्ट बट नॉट द लीस्ट इन हमारे कंट्री का सक्सेस किस पर डिपेंड होता है ऑन डाइवर्सिफाइंग द मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इंडस्ट्री और जब हम डाइवर्सिफाई करते हैं ऐसे रीजनल जो डिस्पैरिटी होता है उसको हम बॉन्ड कर सकते हैं ठीक है तो अब हम सब क्लियर है यस अंशुल ऑल माय ब्लेसिंग्स आर विथ यू एट आर देयर विथ यू एट ऑल टाइम्स बच्चा यस आर वी क्लियर यस आर वी क्लियर मैम यू आर नॉट रिप्लाइंग आई एम नॉट इट्स नॉट दैट आई एम नॉट रिप्लाइंग आई वुड हैव मिस्ड सम ऑप्शन आउट राइट यस ओके All right, everybody. All right. What is going on? P Y Qs are going on, right? Everything is there. Yes, ma'am. On what basis can we say that water is a renewable resource? We are able to say water is a renewable resource because of the fact that water. See, whatever water that is there, no, there's always a water cycle that is going on. So basically, if you see, there's a lot of water that is there on the ice caps and wherever we find, especially in the polar ice caps, there's a lot of water which is available. And whatever water you use, right, you don't lose it technically. So in hydraulic machines or if you look at dams and generating hydro electric electricity, basically you are not consuming the water. You are utilizing the water to generate electricity, which is why on that basis we are saying it is renewable. Okay. All right, coming back. Compare 
intensive subsistence farming with that of commercial farming practiced in India. Yes. What is the difference? Hello Manali. Oh, I have missed your question again, Bacha. I'll have a quick look. Yes. All right. Now a lot of biology questions coming in, Bachas. I'll not be able to explain biology. We will get distracted. Right? So everybody quickly tell me. I am glad Ayushi that you are finding this helpful. Very, very glad. I hope you have subscribed to our channel. I hope everybody who's here in this, you know, watching this video has subscribed. If you still have not hit subscribe button, I am... Guys, come on. Hit that subscribe button. No? Very good. High pressure of land and high doses. Right? Very good. Yes. Farming for living while other one is farming for earning. Yes, very good. What is GDP? Yes, I will explain it. Okay, there's I think a question based on that. So I'll, it'll be better because see, we are also running short of time. So I'll quickly explain along with that. Okay, very good. Commercial farming for perspective of earning money. Yes, okay. My main doubt is gross, gross domestic product kya hota hai? I will tell Yes, yes. Okay. All right, very good. Most of you have answered this question. So here's a quick way. See again, like I told you, when it is compare, when it is differentiate or whether you know it is when two things are given, right? Always use a tabular column. Okay. So when we talk about intensive subsistence farming, as we know, it is practiced in areas with high population and there is high pressure of land, right? So how do we always define this? We say that there is small piece of land and there is high pressure on it, right? High pressure or I can also say high output. And in this case, we know that there's a lot of biochemical output or there's a lot of fertilizers and chemical pesticides which are used for higher production. Now, this is very labor intensive, right? That means that a lot of labor will go into this. Yes. And we see that there, need, there is maximum utilization of land. So, there'll be a small piece of land and entire piece of land will be utilized, right? So, some examples are rice, pulse seeds, which are considered to be examples of intensive substance subsistence farming while on the other hand if you see when we talk about commercial farming again we know that large lands or large areas of lands are used right so we see that large areas of land are used and we see that there are high doses right so here in this case we see that lot of modern inputs like high yielding variety seeds and everything are used and again of course we know that chemical pesticides are used but again in more to obtain productivity and why are these crops grown that is important these crops are grown for making sale and profit so large plot is very very important and again utilization is there so your plant Plantations are your examples for this, right? So plantations that is there is tea, coffee and sugar cane. So if you are writing the answer, please make sure that you go ahead and write it. Are we clear? Okay. Bar bar mere question ko aap miss kar rahe ho. GDP, GDP ka explanation mein karungi. Ek question hai uske basis pe. Toh mein us ta, time pe mein explain karungi. Thik hai? Now, those of you who are asking me, some of you are like, ma'am, what are the benefits of using non-conventional? See, your non-conventional uh, non sources are mainly your renewable sources, right? Your conventional sources include coal and everything. So, if you're using your renewable sources that are there, such as solar or, you know, hydroelectric or whatever, uh, tidal, wind, anything you take it, mainly it is eco-friendly, right? And we know that it will not be exhaustible. That means it will not get exhausted very fast and we can use it for a wrong longer run and it is more sustainable okay i hope i have answered that question second one ma'am water is renewable then why is there a scarcity see what do we mean by renewable that means that whatever water is lost it can come back and in nature, we know that there is a water cycle which is in play that makes this happen. And when we use it in hydroelectric power, what effectively happens is that there is a turbine, right? And we know that the water is made to run in fast speed and the turbine will spin. And when the turbine will spin, this in turn will generate the electricity. So technically, I am not taking this water and utilizing the water to get energy, right? I am not spending the water. I am not taking it and converting it into something to get electricity. While here I am just renew, you know, using it. While on the other hand, when you talk about water scarcity, you want to question number 22, everybody on your screens. Yes, very important. 
the government of india introduced various technological and institutional reforms to improve agriculture in the 1980s and the 1990s right so please support this statement with examples so here you need to list down what are agricultural reforms right you need to write down what they are how what are institutional reforms I have only taught you agriculture. You should be able to answer this. If you have not watched my video yet, you can go check that video out. So you need to write down this. Then go ahead, list all of these down one by one. Right? So please make sure that you list it down in this way. And that is how you will be scoring your five marks here. You need to list it. Right? Yes, everyone. Quickly give me the answer. Very good everybody, very good, yes, all right. So you start off with talking about what are agricultural reforms, how we have these two and how agricultural reforms makes agriculture a profitable activity and it improves the socio-economic condition, right? Okay, ma'am, I have two questions in the whole session which are in term 1. Mein. Oh, oh, okay. No problem, bachas, no problem, right? Okay. Okay, so now let's move on, right? So examples of technological reforms are modern equipment, irrigation, testing, hybrid seeds, fertilizers, constant guidelines that are there. Then institutional reforms are how the government provides subsidy to the farmers, how they discarded landlordism and of course, uh, you know, made sure that they consolidated the land. And like you said, bank loans are provided at low interest and provision of credit card. So in this case, if you see, you will have to elaborate all of these pointers, right? Okay. But maza aage aapke class mein, amazing. That is what I want to hear, right? So make sure that all these pointers are mentioned. I am not explaining too much. You already know the answer to this, right? But five points, starting with what are agricultural reforms? What are the institutional ones? And what are the technological ones? Explain this. Collateral is kind of like... I'm not able to put it in words. Collateral is like if I have, um, if I have to maybe get a loan, right? Then I'll keep my land as collateral, right? That means something I am aiding to put with this, okay? Last three questions. After that, it is menti time, okay? After this is menti time, everybody. Last three questions we'll quickly discuss. How are industries responsible for environmental degradation in India? Explain with examples. Super easy question. I will put star mark on this question also. It is very simple, right? And in your textbook also, as you know, right? As you know, they always have it. Yes, kind of like that, Nikhil. Kind of like that. Very quickly. Pollution, ha. Huh? In pollution, you have to write about all the pollutions that are there. So you can write about each of it briefly, right? So here, as you know, you have how it contributes to air pollution, how it goes ahead and contributes to water pollution, thermal pollution, noise pollution. Yes, very good. So you need to elaborate on these points, right? So when you talk about air pollution, we know that sometimes there are manufacturing industries which release harmful oxides, right? And we know that this can have an effect on animals plants and the atmosphere and industrial this can also cause uh, it can affect human lives as well now on the other hand we also know that sometimes there's a lot of impurities or harmful chemicals which are released into water and this affects the aquatic life and it also makes water undrinkable i mean uh, you know it will not make it proper it make it unfit for usage right and we know that mainly you know paper industry and steel industry are responsible for discharging tons of waste into the water body 
right and we also know that at times using generators and drills and all of these activities can cause noise pollution and of course you know in certain industries hot water is used that is released directly into water bodies that can affect the water aquatic life right thereby we know that dumping harmful chemicals and thermal waste really hot waste can of course damage the soil as well yes harmful gases like carbon monoxide right very good so you can write five pointers you have these four points elaborate on one 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 and you are good to go okay all of this is there on your screens you can take a screenshot or i'll share with this on telegram you will be able to write and understand this okay hello pranavi hello so are we clear everybody are we clear with how to write this yes are we clear okay Yes, हो गया बस हो गया दो घंटे का सेशन ऑलमोस्ट डन टू मोर क्वेश्चन राइट मैम कैन यू डिफ्रेंशिएट बिटवीन थर्मल एंड वॉटर पोल्यूशन सी वॉटर पोल्यूशन इज रिलीजिंग केमिकल्स इन टू द वॉटर राइट थर्मल पोल्यूशन थर्मल पोल्यूशन इज हॉट वॉटर एंड इट कुड बी थर्मल अदर पोल्यूटेंट इट कुड बी अदर केमिकल्स विच कैन नॉट ओनली बी रिलीज इन टू द वॉटर समटाइम्स दे आर डम्प्ड इन टू द सॉयल ऑल्सो राइट सो दैट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द टू ये वेरी गुड निखेल वेरी गुड Now moving on to question number twenty-four, everybody. Last second, last question. Roadways still have an edge over railways in India. Support the statement. We know that roadways and railways are extremely efficient in our country, but somehow roadways have an edge over it, right? Yes. You can chat after the class gets over. Yes, Natasha. Very good. Very good. All right, everybody. Fata fat. What is it, ma'am? SST नहीं हो रहा है. See, I understand. For those of you who are struggling with SST, you, it also comes with a lot of motivation, right? Tell yourself you will be able to do it, and please make sure that you go ahead and you have a look at it, right? Okay. Roadways are cheaper. Yes. So first and foremost, construction of roads is much lower, or the cost, right? So cost of construction of roads is much lower than that of railways, right? And we know that roads can be used to travel. A lot of you were telling me, ma'am, it's impossible to build railways in higher gradients or in mountains, right? But roads can be built there in higher gradients and mountains such as the Himalayas. And we know that road transport is more economical, and of course, there are fewer people. Uh, relatively so if you want to travel a shorter distance with a fewer number of people road transport is easier right so if you want to go from mg road to indranagar you will not take the railways right but rather the road would be easier for you relatively easier and we know that of course when compared uh, to the other modes of transport the road transport actually connects all of it together right it builds everything together so these are the pointers that you need to write for this okay on your screens everybody these are the important pointers all right yes ra road railway is the cheapest it is but nonetheless as we know right it's important ma'am what is the role of tourism as trade okay i know i i think i missed that question and you're like ma'am kya ho raha hai right so see when you talk about tourism as trade in india if you think about it if people come to visit our country right so what is tourism where you entertain tourists and you have tourist spots right where they can go visit see the place now how does this enable trading so when they come to the country and they visit the country people are also able to see the potential of the country right and when they see what kind of resources are available what kind of labor is available and of course what is the potential it also enables for trade right so that is one thing you need to understand now some of you are asking me ma'am ye gdp kya hota hai i think that was what was her, your question right so as we talk about gdp it is the gross domestic product right so basically it talks about what all have you produced in the year right and as you know right it also um, again i want to simply put gdp because it's a very tricky concept so gdp of a country tells you how much of your economy how much have you grown economically or as an economic power right so when the gdp is high or when as the gdp grows the country is also growing right and what is the basis of your gdp what all you manufacture so basically your agricultural produce your other manufacturing industries which also incorporates maybe your paper industry you know your technological advances that you do all of that right that 
that is what your GDP is. Very simple and easy, right? Yes, it's a market value of all your products, whatever you manufacture and produce. That is what it is. Yes? Now, last question, everyone. Then we are going on to Menti. Yes. Last question and then Menti. Okay? Why is agriculture called as the backbone of the Indian economy? Why is it called so? Yes? Why is it called so? Abhi Gaming, I think I missed your question, Bacha. Let me have a look. I'm only able to see, please tell. 70% dependence, yes, okay. Abhimanyu, I don't think we're able to find it. It's okay, we'll go down to the chat. We'll go down. Yes, it provides raw material, yes. Very good, very good. Ma'am, when, la please clear, what is this parlor pani is like the clearest water that you obtain, right? That's what they call as parlor pani. Yes, okay. Very good. Subscribe, Kardia. Amazing. That is what we need to do. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Yes. So we know that agriculture that is there makes 17% of the GDP. More than 70% of our population is dependent on agriculture. It provides raw materials for industries. It also, we know that it is responsible for maintaining food security. Right. These are all the important pointers that you will have to mention. Right. Very good. Very good. So these are the things you need to write, okay? And we know that it is one of the backbones of our national economy. It requires less capital and of course helps in the development of tertiary sector. Yes, so these are the important pointers that you will have to write. So everybody with this, if you see 25 questions, ho gaya, right? 25 questions are done. Now menti ka wait is over. And before that, reminder for Baiju Spoken English classes, which is available from grades 4 to 9, right? And if you have your younger siblings or if you have someone in the family who requires English speaking skills or they're looking for some place where they can improve their English, then you can go ahead and recommend this to them. It is a paid program, right? And of course, you know that the link is available in the description box and you have Cambridge certified teachers teaching you. So you can check this out, okay? What is food security? Food security is nothing but the availability of food for people. If you have people in your country, they must be able to buy food, right? And if they have to buy food, there must be surplus amount of food available. And if surplus amount of food should be available to them, people should be producing it. No, that is what it is. Ma'am, aren't we supposed to do 30 questions? Yes, the remaining questions are on menti, right? So the remaining 10 questions will be on menti and there will be 10 questions. So technically I'm making you do 35 questions, right? Yes. So here's the menti code everybody. Go to www.menti.com and type the code 3893 38933440. 38933440. Yes. So Abhimanyu, I'm going to be switching to the menti screen, right? Thank you. Yes, all right. The switch is done and the menti screen is there. Okay, everybody. Ovia, I told you, right? Food security is the availability of food and the accessibility. That means, first of all, food should be available to the people. Yes. And secondly, food people should be able to buy the food. No, it should not be that I am making, I am doing agriculture and I am selling 1 kg onion for 200 rupees. That is, again, it will cause a problem, right? So I hope now we are clear. And on tourism, I hope I have already answered this question. Okay, I've already answered these questions on tourism and everything. You can quickly go back. Everybody, jaldi jaldi join menti. I'm going to get started. Code is 38933440. And everybody, I hope all of you have liked this video. I hope all of you have subscribed to our channel, right? Because as you know, right, Baiju 6, uh, 9 and 10 has always got you covered. We are very serious about your exam prep. And as you know, we are getting started. Mom, please move. I can't see the code. Yes, yes. All right, everybody. All right. I can see that around 80 of you are there in the live, right? 
80 of you are there in the live and I can see very few people have joined Menti. Yes, very few people have joined Menti. Guys, what is this? We are going to get started. Okay, now if you don't join Menti, it's going to be your loss. Everyone was waiting for Menti today and now when Menti has come, we are like, ma'am, why do join join? Okay, yes. Shivansh, I think you are very new, right? So my name is Aishwarya and I mainly teach biology. I help you out with SST also because I know all of you require SST and you need help, right? Ma'am, we did it. Yes. See, today's class was not an easy class, right? We had so much to study. We had so much to remember. But you guys stayed, stayed through throughout today's class. You learned, right? So that is the main thing. Abhimanyu, can we please switch the screen, please, to the mentee screen? Can we switch? Yes. All right. I am. I hope all of you have learned today, right? I hope all of you enjoyed today's class, right? And I hope all of you have understood geography now, right? I hope you're feeling a little better with the chapter. Even if you've still not started studying, I hope all of you have gone through it. Yes? Okay. Uh, Abhimanyu, I think on my screen, we have not switched to Menti. Can we please switch? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Abhimanyu. Thank you so much. Very quickly, everybody. Shout out for Abhimanyu, sir, who's been the chat moderator, helping us out with all the amazing polls. He's helping you out. And, you know, for those of you who are asking me doubts and you were saying, ma'am, aapne mera doubt nahi deka, he was actually scrolling and trying to find the comment, right? So, quick shout out to Abhimanyu, sir, on the chat and tell him thank you for helping us out today. He's helping you out with the code also. He's put the code that is there. Yes. Okay. Ma'am, you are not listening. I am, of course, listening, right? Main bahut badiya hu. Abhi hum, we'll get started, right? Last 10 questions, everyone. Yes, all right. Very good, very good. Okay. Yes, lot of love coming in. That's amazing. You are all very wonderful students, very nice bachas. Very happy to be proud of, you know, proud to be teaching you, right? Okay. So let's get started, everyone. First question on your screens. All right. Which soil is also known as cotton soil? Is it laterite soil, black soil, alluvial soil or red soil? This is very simple and easy, right? Basically, where is cotton grown or in which soil is cotton grown? Quickly, everybody. Yes. 45 seconds are there. You can answer on Menti as well. So you can go ahead. I can see only 55 of you have joined Menti. So quickly everybody go to www. Oh, so many www.menti.com and type in the code. Yes. All right then. I can see 60 of you are here now. 61. Guys, keep the number going. I have a good number on the live session, right? So quickly go ahead. Yes, very good. We know that cotton is mainly go grown in black soil and its properties allows cotton to grow efficiently, which is why we also call it as black soil, right? So quickly everyone, reminder that go to 38933440. That is the code, okay? So now we will move on to question number two. On your screens everyone, quickly. On your screens and let's get started. Okay, where is the Narora nuclear power plant located? Okay, is it in Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra or Karnataka? Right? Quickly everyone, again live chat pay, lot of distractions happening. So guys, please don't distract everybody who is trying to study here. Stay focused, bachas, and answer on Menti platform. Go to menti.com and answer there. Okay? Very good, very good. Okay. Lot of mixed answers coming. I see a lot of incorrect answers also in the chat. But this is very easy. See the name, Narora. Where will you find such a place? Oh, some of you got confused with Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu. But the correct answer here is option B, Uttar Pradesh. That's where we find the Narora nuclear power plant. 
Now let's move on to question number three. Okay, question number three on your screens. Yes, everyone quickly question number three and let's get started. Which port was developed as a subsidiary port or a what do you say a smaller port to relieve the growing pressure on the Kolkata port? Was it Jawaharlal Nehru port, Kanla port, Paradweep port or Haldia port? What is the correct answer? Yes, yeah, see, with MCQs also you are revising a lot, right? So, jaldi jaldi fatafat go ahead and make sure you join Menti. All right, everyone. Yes, all right. I can see the answers coming in. Holdia. Okay, thank you for that. It's pronounced as Holdia Port. Okay, I will be careful. Yes. So the correct answer, as all of you have told me, is option D, Holdia Port, which was built as a subsidiary port or a smaller port to be in easier ways to relieve the growing pressure on the Kolkata Port. Okay. Now moving on to question number four, everyone, on your screens. Yes, question number four. Who exclaimed, there is enough for everybody's need and not for anybody's greed? Is it Jawaharlal Nehru, Sardar Vallabhai Patel, Swami Vivekananda or Mahatma Gandhi? Yes? Ma'am, aap se nahi dikha rahe hai. I am not able to understand that part. Ma'am, there is enough time. Yes, there's a lot of time. This is also easy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm covering the options. Sorry, sorry. You will be able to see the options now. <laughs> Too much time is there. It's okay. Very good. Correct answer here is Mahatma Gandhi. Now question number 5 after which we will have the leaderboard. Okay. So everybody question number 5 on your screens. And see if you still have not joined Menti. Go to www.menti.com. Type in the code 38933440. Yes. Yes Arshia. Hello. Hello. Now moving on everyone. Why do we need to conserve our forest and wildlife? Is it to preserve ecological diversity, to preserve genetic diversity, for maintenance of aquatic biodiversity or to over extract plant and animal species? We're talking about why we need to conserve it, right? Why do we need to conserve it? I hope the options are visible. I think there's a lot of time, no? A lot of time to answer. 45 seconds, Aram say you all answer the question. No hurry. Very good, everybody. Very good. The correct answer is option A. So quickly, let's have a look at the leaderboard. Let's see who has made it to the leaderboard, right? Yes, all right. I can see Som here is the fastest. Then we have Xavier, Mamita, Ayush, Lithan. I have somebody whose name is God. Then Salik, Hemank, Saint Elmo and Anshul Snehal Palai. Hello, well done everybody. Well done. I can see Ashok is telling me, ma'am, I'm in the 12th place. Well done. Salik is like, I'm on the leaderboard. Then take a screenshot, right? Some of you are saying, ma'am, I'm on 13th. Atmadi, very good. Yes. Second place. Dreamer is on second place. Awesome. Awesome. Amazing. Amazing guys. Amazing work. Okay. Yes. Well done my bachas. Well done. Now let's move on to last five questions. Technically if you see our 30 questions are done. Five questions are now bonus for all of you. Okay. Fatafat we will wind up and then all of you go. Because I know today's class has been very long. No. Almost two and a half hours I have taken class today. So don't worry. We will quickly wind this up. Yes. Question number six, okay? Unclassed forests are mainly found where? All north, 
eastern states and parts of Gujarat, Kerala and Tamil Nadu, Punjab and Haryana or West Bengal and Bihar. Very quickly everybody. All right, well done everyone, well done. Lot of answers coming in and I can see mixed number of answers. Ma'am, why does everybody want you to say their name? I don't know. Maybe they feel nice, no, when they hear their name. So probably it's that. Very good everybody, very good. All northeastern states and parts of Gujarat, right? They all come under the category of unclassed forests, okay? Now moving on to question number 7. Yes, question number 7 on your screens. Nagarjuna Sagar Dam is built over which river? Is it the Satluj, Mahanadi, Krishna or Kaveri? Yes, everybody, quickly. Ma'am, class cup saath hota hai. Her, every day we start our classes at 5 p.m. So at 5 p.m. we have a class for 7th, uh, we have a class for 10th grade. Then at 6 p.m. we normally have a class for both 9th and 10th. And at 7 p.m. we actually have a dual stream for both 9th as well as 10th. And we've balanced out your live streams in such a way that it will be spread across maths, science and SST. Okay? See, Nagarjuna Sagar Dam. Read it. It's very simple. Four more seconds. Very good, everyone. Very good. Right? The correct answer here is option C. Krishna. Right? It's built over the Krishna River. Okay. Now moving on to question number 8. Last 3 questions and we will wind up. Okay, last 3 questions. Question number 8 is a very easy question. I know this. Identify which of the following crops is not a millet. Right? So is it jowar, bajra, maize or ragi? So easy guys. So easy. This should be in your pocket. Right? Answer should be in your pocket. See, what is not a millet? What are millet? They are coarse grains, right? I have given you a clue. They are coarse grains. In this, which among the following is not a coarse grain rich in fibers? I have given you way too many answers already. I have given you clues. If you still not answer, now is the time for you to answer. <laughs> Very good guys. Somebody was like, my maze is not in my pocket. But nonetheless, answer was there in your pocket. No, correct answer is option C, maze, right? Whereas Ragi, Bajra and Johar, they are all millets, okay? Remember this, don't forget. Question number 9, everyone, on your screens. Now, very quickly, I hope, yeah, okay, I'll, one minute. I'll tell you the question and then I'll tell you. Arabica variety of coffee was initially brought to India from which among the following countries? Was it brought from Yemen, Vietnam, Japan or Korea? Now those of you who are asking me ma'am where to answer, go to www.menti.com and type in the code 38933440. And I hope that a lot of you are here already. I hope quickly everybody, all my bachas like the video. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, right? Just a way of how I tell answer is in my pocket. My mother used to tell me this. Like she used to tell it in my our, you know, mother tongue. She used to be like, this is there. No, it'll be in your pocket. Like it's as simple as taking something out and giving it. Yes. Very good. The Arabica variety that we popularly use in our country was imported from Yemen, right? And then we started cultivating it at a large scale. So correct answer is option A. Now we will move on to the last question, okay? Last question everyone, on your screens. Which city is known as the electronic capital of India? Is it Gurgaon, uh, Gurugram, Noida, Bengaluru or Pune? I speak a mix of Tamil and Malayalam. For those of you who are asking me what is my mother tongue, I speak a mix of both. 
क्लू इज आई वॉज आई वॉज ब्रॉट अप हियर येस आई वॉज ब्रॉट अप हियर आई लॉट ए बॉर्न बट आई वॉज ब्रॉट अप Yes, all right. Some of you are saying, ma'am, आप मैंने आपके channel को subscribe. Oh, why we not subscribe, madam? Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Yes, all right. Okay, it's a very easy answer. Yes, it's the Silicon Valley of India. It's Bengaluru, right? So correct answer here is option C. Okay. So now with this, let's have a quick look at the leaderboard. All right. Okay. Thank you, Na Nam Nanmaran. I hope I got your name right. Well done, Xavier. Well done. Right. I can see Xavier has got nine thousand five hundred and fifty-four points. I can see Ayush, Mamita, Salik, Anshul. I have Kulbushan, Hemank, Classy, Adi, four, four, four. Who was telling me, ma'am, my answer is not in my pocket, but it is in my brain. Is the fastest. Right. Then I have Komal and Lucky. So of course, a lot of you with this. As you know, we come to the end of today's. As you know, today we come to the end of today's menti quiz, right? Okay, all right. Thank you, Pranjali. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. From which section should we start our exams? See, there are two ways of looking at it. Okay, one is when you have your reading time, go through it, right? Go through the questions, see what are your easy ones. So normally, if you have your one markers, normally I will always say do one markers and two markers first, and then between three, four, and five you take a call. But if you are writing it, don't specify the section properly and complete the section and go. Okay? Don't leave half and half here and there and make it very confusing. If you are doing your four markers, then keep doing all your four markers. So at the end of the day, what I would always suggest is that go for the ones which are easy for you. and then go to the ones which are tough because the ones which are easy you will write fast but the ones which are tough for you whatever it might be it will take some time right so everybody please make sure you have liked this video and you have subscribed to our channel because when i tell you right byju's 9 and 10 has got you covered i mean it quite literally and as you know right with sst also we're slowly starting to help you out and i know that there's a lot more that you need from us and we are trying our best with everything but i hope that you enjoyed today's class did you find this helpful if you found this helpful i have only one small request from all of you please please in the comments below let me know how this helped you what more you want so that we can inform the team out there that this is what needs to be done right so everybody please make sure that you let me know in the comments and sst ka revision kis subject se shuru kare again there are two options for this right one thing is you start with the toughest and go to the easiest so that could be anything but again as you know preferably i would say start with history then go to geography and then move on to your economics and pol science right so start with history that would be the best yes all right everybody so i'll be winding up i know today's class has gone very long but if you found this helpful you know what to do no please make sure that you let me know in the comments below and i will see you all very soon again up until then bye everybody take care and good night